Happy 4th of July. Hello. What's happening, everyone? Nog in the nog. How are you, my friend? It is early for you, but welcome. Good to see you. Jesse, happy 4th. Greets from San Diego. Uh, yeah, uh, my extended family, uh, my stepfathers, all San Diego, La Mesa. My uh, stepdad went to Grossmont High. I spent many of my youth traveling between LA and San Diego. All right, what's happening? Mike, how are you, bud? Hope you're having a good fourth out there. The city's quiet. <laughs> All right. Lewis, happy fourth, brother. Mark, happy fourth. Martin, hello, hello, hello. Good day to my UK brethren. Hope you guys are well. Everybody see me? We got a little uh, music. How's it all sound? Mic check, mic check. Craig, Forrest, invalid to live. <laughs> Come on, brother, change your name. Be a little more positive. Billy, Dwink, sweet, thank you. I still don't trust StreamYard. Uh, when I hit the go live, it pops into YouTube. So I don't trust you, but so tell me if you, everything's good. I know Lewis said it's good. Wayne, Mr. Beatty, good to see you, brother. All right, what do we got here? Output. Let me turn my volume down a little. I'm hearing the sound a little bit. Yeah, do a do a music check, guys. Let me know how it sounds to you guys. Actually, I don't think the music's on. At least not on your stream. Hey, Dave, welcome back, brother. Invalid to live, okay, everything seems good, sweet. Um, all right, Mike, we'll get to your question in two seconds. Billy, everything's good, everything seems good, okay. Captain Oblivious, evening, my friend. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to all my friends out there today on the 4th of July. So the stream time actually works for us, doesn't it? So it's noon me, West Coast US, so East Coast dudes, three, you're probably gonna barbecue shortly, so if you gotta bounce, okay, cool, you hear the music, thank you. Yeah, some guys like it, some guys don't, but I think I'm gonna stick it with the music. Uh, I hear it in my hair, then I hear myself in my hair, so sometimes when I pause, I hear myself. Live stream's a little different. Um, some of you that do edited video content, I had a comment earlier, uh, I forget the, the channel's name, dude, the nice guy of the UK. Uh, on the timestamps in the description down below, over here, down below, uh, those timestamps correlate to a live one-on-one. -on -one. So when I put those in, in uh, the posted video on YouTube after we stream, those will take you right to the points I think are valid for what I'm talking about. So if it says like nine minutes or 1430, when you click that little blue text, it'll jump the video to right there if you don't know about that. Uh, they're called chapters, but this is a live stream. So it's really just a scrub to time lapse into for future rep. Like when I do with the books, with the, the SBS pages at the end of the chapter, it's kind of the same thing to give you a quick little, you know, so you can go back and you don't have to listen to me. <laughs> Bullshit for hours. Okay, sweet. Rasa, what's up? How is Moscow today? So it is noon. Is it midnight in Moscow? Is it that late, Ross? I think you're 12 ahead of me, I think. Uh, TJ, what's up, brother? Oh, don't make me jealous. TJ's got steaks going, boys. Everybody head to TJ's. Uh, cool, Martin, thank you. Yeah, I like the, the we use a lo-fi jazz. It's um, a Spotify channel, and it's just a royalty free so I can stream. Which is weird, because Facebook says I've got copyright music, and they can just F off. I'm also trying not to curse as much. My mother yelled at me the other day. <laughs> She's like, dude, you curse way too much. She goes, what if your little niece heard this? Well, Uncle Mike curses, and she's not allowed to yet. Yeah, AP, yeah, UK, Europe. So this is this is the reason for this. It's noon West Coast US, East Coast 3 p.m. London time UTC 8, Brussels, Paris, Madrid. I think you're nine. Berlin nine, and then moving forward through the Eastern Europe time zones. Tokyo is probably what 5 a.m. 6 a.m. And I'll get to your question, Mike. I didn't forget. Uh, hold on. And then my boys in Auckland, New Zealand area. Um, it's the only city I know. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> There's like five mics in the stream, so some of you just have to listen. Um, okay, let's go back. We had an early question here from, um, let's see here, where's, where's Mike? Uh, Mike, 
How do I say your last name? Huffnagel? Is that how I say that? Mike, I want to get a question out right away. I have uh, Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner, Timmy Lacquer Thinner, Odorless Thinner, Vallejo Airbrush Thinner, and General Odorless Thinner. I don't have X28. Um, okay, so I think there's a follow-up as a fixer, right? Finally, the fourth after five years, yeah. Are you off? Oh, oh, sweet, brother. Good, good, good. Yeah, we have a fellow police officer, and not a fellow, but we have a gentleman officer in the, in the crowd. Gets the day off today. Uh, 7 a.m. New Zealand. Okay, I think you're asking about fisk, uh, fixers. Go with the base coat, whatever you have. So if it's an acrylic base coat or an enamel base coat or a lacquer base coat, the thinner for the fixer for pigments, which we'll do early, and we'll get to what's in the other little Jimmy Sim screen over here. Um, the question to fixer is with any kind of chemical thinner, match it to the chemical paint that the type that you're using on the on the. So if it's an acrylic base coat, go with an acrylic thinner. That's for the pigment fixer that I'm showing with the airbrush. Uh, if you need a stronger fixer, then use the dedicated pigment fixers from the brands. Um, and there is a stronger varnish in it that will bind that a little bit tighter. I usually don't need that level of strength. Um, so I just don't need that type of chemical all the time. I find that the thinners do work pretty well by themselves. Uh, given what you have, if you don't have X20A, let me go back up to your thing again. If I had to choose, um, that's a good question. Um, probably to me a lacquer thinner. Is this the cheapest of the lacquer thinners? Yeah, it's gonna evaporate too fast. I'm not a fan. So there's, there's, it's not contentious by any stretch. Enamel thinner versus lacquer thinner for a fixer on a pigment. It evaporates so fast like faster than the acrylic ones and the alcohol based ones. Um, my answer is just get grab some X28. It's pretty easy. Um, it's a good all arounder because of the glycerin in it. I think the alcohol base to it kind of works in a nice balance. That's kind of why I like it. And it binds to most acrylics. So that works good for me. Um, but uh, the odorless thinners, you're going to want to paint them. So probably the Vallejo airbrush thinner, probably of the list you have that you put up, I'd probably go with that. But boys and girls, you all know this test so test it out see what you think okay yeah i've got the music a little bit low let me go back through dude there's so many dudes here all right let's get some hellos in the way out of the way and we'll talk about what's in front of us and then what i want to talk about today uh we're going to do some airbrushing today my friends uh probably maybe even show you the bench a little bit uh we got a couple projects lined up for the future we're going to get through so what do we got here nog nog i saw you buddy uh wayne yep empty sprue hello in seattle brian checking in Boy, the weather's nice again, right? That little 120 million degrees was like just a, okay, now you can have a nice summer. Yeah, it's beautiful here. It's 85 today, it's like 70 right now, which is, what is that, 20, 21, 19 degrees Celsius, something like that. It's beautiful. Uh, and I suck with my Fahrenheit Celsius. I'm way better metric with the measurements. But anyway, uh, 3 p.m. East Coast, yep. Up, up. Okay, cool. Hopefully that answered you, Mike. Um, Billy, 911 Dispatcher, look at you guys, man. You guys are way better people than me. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Do you ever pull the pigment into the wet oils or just use the thinners? Um, if you have kind of like a like a wet, and we'll, we're gonna do pigments early. We're gonna do some airbrushing, some pigments early, and we'll do the OPR last uh, this time. We're gonna switch it up a little bit just to, for variety's sake, but also, I forgot to make the palette, boys and girls. <laughs> So here we've got we've got a, a, a fresh little dude in the works. It's about 15 minutes old. You can see the it's doing its thing. The uh, the other guys are dead. Actually, it's a little sticky. Actually, it's still going some of those colors. I just got myself. The navy blue keeps going. All right, but anyway, yeah, yeah. What do we got? <clears throat> you got some weather, Burgess. What's up, bud? How are you, man? Some of these names I really do recognize from from previous days. Yeah, empty sprue. That was the weather was nuts. If you guys and they still say it's going on, but I, it has calmed down a lot. It's like 20 degrees cooler again, or a little bit. So Pacific Northwest Fourth of July weekend is typically historically the start of our summer, like weather-wise and everything. Uh, like June gloom starting to clear up, where we get cloudy mornings and then beautiful afternoons. But it's I woke up to beautiful sunshine today, and it's it's I don't even want to be here, Todd. You all can fuck off. I'm gonna go. But anyway, yeah. So, Birmingham, rims models, all right. Peaky Blinders, brother, amazing show. Uh, really, really gotta go up and visit the UK and get up, get up to that part of the country and check it out. Uh, I visited a lot of the UK from Dover, Folkestone, uh, London. Spent a lot of time in Manchester, 
uh, when I was younger. Uh, I had some friends of our, my, my real father. So if you guys don't know, my mother remarried when I was like six years old. So I have two fathers. Uh, one passed when I was 16, 17 in the 80s. And then my other one is the stepfather who was uh, just retired. If he hears this, we're going to see you soon. Um, yeah, I got lucky with that. And that was, you know, there was a little bit of a sidebar on the Father's Day thing. This never intended to ever upset anybody. If, if, if something comes out as a, hey guys, congratulations, or happy 4th, or happy Father's Day, it just meant with, with the energy it's meant, it just have a good time. Um, yeah, you guys are all doing stuff. Okay, so Martin's in France. Or, well, you're French, but you may not be living there. Okay, French student here. What would you say is a good model attack after completed a, a few first projects? What are you into, Martin? What's your subject choice? Um, okay, Burgess says, I have all the tank art books and a couple of the other authors. I wish you could do it all like Mike and the others being uh, colorblind doesn't help at all. <laughs> to the colorblind, I, I have a couple of friends that have stayed in contact with me over the years. One of the main reasons I do put the effort to give you all the bottle titles, because I'm also the guy like, don't worry about the colors so much. But I do give the bottle titles for the colorblind gentlemen out there um, that do struggle with that. Uh, I know a couple friends that have their kids help them with color choices and this is what he's using in this. I will try to continue to do that. It's in the books for a reason so you guys can pull those and know what's going on. Uh, that is for you guys, you know. I am a guy that just, I will mix colors on the fly and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, yeah, so let's see here. Let's go back down to what we're doing. Let's get through some questions in a little bit here, get the kind of flow going relaxes me a little bit. I had some technical difficulties earlier today. <laughs> it got me stressed out. <laughs> no, okay, so everybody's welcome. And, and if you guys aren't familiar yet, uh, there's gonna be a lot more than armor coming. I'm going heavy armor in the beginning, just because that's my comfort zone. Uh, and the bulk of you guys is probably your comfort zone because you're tank art guys and all that stuff. Um, but we've got some gunpla. Uh, we are gonna do some aircraft in the future. I'm getting everything sorted out before we get into the aircraft. They're a little bit different to handle physically, um, especially as you get up in the wing size and, and bigger scales. They, and, and I do have a new camera coming. I think if I do the stream on Wednesday, which I'm pretty sure I probably will, if I'll do a Wednesday, Sunday for now, it seems to work out pretty good. I will, uh, I think the camera's coming Tuesday, mails, no mail Monday, holiday. And then Tuesday, I think I get my, my, my new camera. Now it's used and we'll go through that because it's a great budget thing for you dudes out there that want to get into this. If you have any streaming questions, uh, I've kind of worked most of the bugs out. So I think we're good there. Yeah, Model Guy says he's excited for the aircraft stuff. Me too. Uh, also, fun fact, my main love is actually aircraft. That's what I started out as, like a young one, uh, building the monogram kits in the 70s and 80s. So yes. Um, let me get through some hellos. Okay, Cake, that it was you. I wasn't sure if that was you. So Cake Dodge, my boy, uh, Mehmet from Turkey, welcome. Uh, and he's a fantastic young, uh, how old are you, dude? You're like 18 or 19? Dude, kicking ass when he was doing this shit. Uh, Mehmet, great to see you. Rosso uh, is a Willie's Jeep guy, SAS, flamethrower, recent tack on kits. Yeah, okay, you guys are talking kits for the dude. Yeah, go with whatever's in the chat. These boys know, because I know some of these guys uh, internet wise, and they know their shit. Take their advice to heart. You know, Timothy Stewart, all that stuff. Uh, awesome kits for you guys to work with. Um, how you mix, oh, so John Barnacote says, welcome buddy, good to see you again. Uh, how you mix colors right on the cardboard was a big surprise. Me. So this is really important, that's a great comment. The core of what it is, and the reason you guys are here, is the, are the books, that's a good segue, because let's get into this. Let me pull this guy, I got my bench is so crowded. <laughs> so much stuff here. Uh, I want to share a lot with you guys. So the reason we're all here, me too, because I did write these fuckers, are these guys. So, we're going to really spend time as we do these streams and get everything going here is to really start connecting the dots. The more comments you can relate to like what's in the books, what you're looking for, for me, visually, video wise, we'll try to really answer those one to one for you. Um, none of this is edited, so you will see mistakes, you will see spillage, <laughs> you will see me drop shit, you'll see me fuck stuff up, but you'll also see the good stuff. And you'll see how to fix stuff. You'll see how to troubleshoot. And that also is key because that helps you guys learn. Um, Craig, yeah, good to see you, buddy. Alexander Duchamp, welcome. Another amazing modeler in the in the chat today. Um, but yeah, to John, your comment about mixing on the palette. Uh, Rick's question last week. And CJ, if, I don't know if CJ's in, uh, another aircraft guy. 
from last time where you guys were talking about, there's a transition from the pre thin enamels to OPR. And it's how your work, brushwork goes and then how um, kind of you think through the process of application. And we'll review that again to, to hit the home, what John was talking about in the chat um, and all that good stuff. Um, Tomas, welcome. Good to see you. K. Oma, new guy, figure painter from Norway. Beautiful. Prost. Just here to pick up some tips from a real... Oh, cheers, brother. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see what we can do today. <laughs> but anyway, segue. So we're all here for the books. Also, I had this in, when I woke up this morning, too. Remember all those beautiful Q&As we were doing three, two, three years ago? I'm going to start rereading some of those, and I'm going to do a stream where we're going to open up a Q&A, an old PDF on the, on the RSP website. If you guys haven't downloaded, go grab them. Rick, what's up? Happy 4th. Um, grab those. And in the future, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start rereading some of those Q&A questions we had and some of what you asked and then what I answered. We'll do a little like Michael reading session and then I'll do it on the video. And I think that'll be another cool little thing for expanding out the live streams a little bit. But yeah, so for now, the books, we're going to point some stuff out. We're going to do some wheel painting today. We're going to show you how you weather the wheels on, on the Hetzer because we did the pigments. We're going to do some more pigments. I've got it over here. But we've been working on, uh, actually, let me start with these guys because I want to get these out of the way. I got to move these out of the way. So, live streams coming down the road. I'm going to include a couple full projects for you guys. Uh, and it's going to be a broad spectrum of, of subject matter. I'm going to give you a, a sampling of what's coming. And then the first, one, two, three, three, yeah. We'll do three kind of to start. Um, so, we'll, for the allied guys, for the green guys, uh, things of this nature, we have a. Uh, Got a little lazy soon. So this is the again to the gentleman that asked about kits. If you if you want to move up from a Stuart, still one of the best armor kits ever made. The Centaur slash Cromwell from from Tamiya uh, are brilliant, especially out of the box. Don't f with stuff. Don't upgrade it. Here's just some tracks, um, some pro model tracks. We're gonna do tracks, boys and girls. I know y'all want to see that. Uh, I got some resin pieces here. Uh, these are Ultracast, little Ultracast doohickeys. Let me, let me switch cameras for you guys. I'm tired of my view. Let's get over here. There we go. All right. So we're going to get into this in the future. This will be one of the, the main projects will be the, will, will be this um, Cromwell. It's not a Centaur, is it? No, it's Cromwell. And then this guy. What we're going to do with the T-34 uh, some of my friends in the Gunpla, they love to call this trash to treasure. We're gonna take uh, we're gonna take the T34 and we're gonna fix them. We're gonna put them in the shop, little maintenance. Little Craig boy, where are you, brother? We're gonna do a little maintenance on this, on this guy. Gonna fix him up. Uh, we're gonna order up some tracks. Uh, I might let you get a side on the tracks on this one. Actually, I might do like a little quick poll and, and see what tracks you want me to work with, uh, and maybe buy those in and, and, and grab those, and then we'll put those tracks onto here. I have some model casting for these somewhere. When we get to tank tracks and to truck wheels and road wheels and, and car wheels, uh, tire tires, uh, not tank road wheels per se, uh, but the stuff you don't see a lot of from me. Um, we do have some farm tractor equipment and some other stuff, we'll get into that too, but we're gonna do tracks, uh, updating this guy at least, clean up. I have a special turret, an old, uh, I believe it's Wilder production. It's the, the 122. Uh, we're gonna swap out this turret. I'm missing parts and this guy's been beat up. We're gonna relegate this turret to the, uh, the Shelf of love there. But anyway, these will be some allied projects coming up. Let me get these out of the way Let's talk about another one coming up So I mentioned this in the stream before And when we're doing we've talked about this so we've got the paper panzer. We've got these guys here So we got the turret I've been working on this is the demo turret for a while and what we're gonna probably do is, this thing will eventually get repainted. And then what I had done, is this guy, pull this guy in here. This is the Trumpeter E75. I believe that's in the Auber barrel on that. I'm not really sure, I can't remember. I did some work years ago. I started to do all the weld beads. Um, that is the Gunzi, uh, the Mr. Putty thing, a little trick I did. Uh, but I will update all this. Uh, I think I prepped it for photo etch, or at least the tool brackets and stuff, so I plugged the holes. This guy's pretty old. Kit tracks, again, the tracks to hit all this. We'll, we'll probably be doing some demos with this, but I'll probably swap these out eventually um, for something a little bit nicer. But we'll be painting some of the kit tracks to just show you some techniques and stuff like that. Um, and then, we, of course, we've got this guy. Now, I also have in the box, love that's hiding in the closet, you can't see yet. It's in the box. 
Uh, I have a bunch of other Paper Panzer shirts too. I didn't realize I had a few from, from John Oscillator from Paper Panzers. I went to Belgium in 2018 and we did a, a tour of the, the Bassat um, Armor Museum. There's like four or five museums in the world on planet Earth. That's one of the top five by Munster, Duxford, Bovington. Bassat was, was uh, oof. Uh, I think in my Instagram feed, there's a bunch of photos from the museum. I think I put in the highlights on the Instagram stuff. But anyway, future project. So we're gonna do some stuff with that. And we'll do some more work on the turret today. I did put a flat coat on. Yeah, let's see. For my non-tank friends, no aircraft projects to debut yet. Like I said, we're gonna get into that. But this guy will lay him down. So this is the Bandai 1100 GPO4. It's a RE100 kit. And what we're gonna do is obviously this thing is the demo model. It's uh, it's seen better days and we're gonna make it look like a, a real Gundam. So we're gonna probably do some priming on this guy just to show you some air, uh, airbrushing, some primer steps later to this afternoon. Um, but this is gonna be, he's, he's, seen, he's seen some stuff. So that was, let's see if we get that to zoom in there. Yeah, so that was the work we did in OPR, like the second or first or second stream, I forget. It was just kind of up in here and, and some whatever. Anyway, we're gonna repaint this guy. So that's one of the other projects we got going on. And then let me get this guy out of the way because this is kind of that one of those little like overview conversations. Uh, I'm not sure this will be a project yet, but this will be kind of what you're to uh, expect with the projects. So let's pull out Mr. Four. Real quick here, let's just go through this real quick. So in this particular book, so I've got the camera right in front of me. So we've got the, the winter whitewash chapter and inside. No Panzer IV, there's another, oh, another great kit to use. To me, a 40 scale Hetzer. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, I'll look it up, yep. Uh, Lewis, my goals, my weathering work with Gunpla looks so real. Uh, talks, yeah, storytelling. We'll get into storytelling big time, as Lewis says. Um, happy to inspire. Empty Spool Cool is fairly new channel, but my 105, okay, you got your own channel, awesome. Uh, Facebook and Insta Suite. Uh, Mark Dempsey didn't realize I've already watched some of your stuff. Yeah, there's probably some a bunch of other editor dudes in here. I saw Rick's come through. He said hello, Gary Matthews. Hello, buddy. Uh, photo etch at any time? Oh, dude, you just you just going right for the jugular, right? <laughs> yes, we'll do some stuff. I won't do full on. So what I'll probably do with photo etch um, for some of those projects that I just displayed, there's some photo etch that has to go on over time. It's not great for streaming. What I'll probably do is like the bulk of it off stream and then pull a few pieces in and give you like what I think are some tips. Like we'll do like a German tool clamp and, and just kind of see how it goes. Uh, I'm not the best best and I don't solder. Uh, I, you know, I'm nowhere near good at because I just don't solder. I'm just lazy, <laughs> super lazy with that. Uh, you know, Adam's a, a, the, Adam and Martin are great solders, um, but I'm not, I don't really, you know, I haven't really done a lot of that. But yeah, we'll definitely get into some photo etch. Uh, but I got a little couple of tricks I've got, you know, some things I do. I tend to, uh, as a model builder who came through that generation of when the photo explosion happened, I've backed off because I actually get a little bit more personal enjoyment from working with the plastic and trying to see what I can get out of that before I really dive into say like a, a an old Voyager or Edward set. That kind of conversation, I found more enjoyment, you know, with with styrene strips and others or plot plate to you gun plot guys that don't know what the styrene. I'll try to keep the terms uh, one to one. If I know a terms from another community, I'll make sure that it's it's correlated and strange. So you guys know what I'm talking about. So anyway, what I wanted to get to, uh, so this guy, so here, so what we have here is we have the stug here is on my desk, and what we're gonna do. So what you're gonna kind of get here, guys, is you've got the stug. It's right here. Here we go. It's very rare that I get to show the model in the book. So you've got the stug here. You got the stug here. Uh, and then we've got another Stug here, another Tamiya. This is a Tamiya 35th uh, B model, the Offs B. Uh, but what we're gonna do is, is the point of the stream in terms of what I'm talking about with the projects is we're gonna go from this. There's my special effects, boys and girls. There you go, I worked on that all day. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get into that as far as what we're talking about moving forward. We have a lot to get into with the stream and the channel and everything else moving forward. So this is a preview. Uh, I hope it gets you guys kind of jazzed up for what's coming. We'll go a little bit heavy armor in the months of July. We'll throw in some Gunpla. And then as we get through summer and maybe later in July, August, we'll, we'll throw in some aircraft and some civilian subjects as well to kind of cover all the bases. But let me get this out of here.
on, right on. Relatable 100. Happy 4th. Have you layered pigments on your oil work or for rust appearance on your subjects? You mean using rust pigments? Clear it specifically? Uh, the answer to that is actually no. I don't use a lot of rust pigments, to be truthful, because there's the life color, uh, rust color set, the paint set, which does an excellent job, and then the oils themselves do a pretty good job. I don't use the rust pigments, if that's your question, uh, meaning not four strand applying oils to dry together. Um, let me get to the second part in a second. But yeah, to rust pigments in particular, I, I just texturally wise, oftentimes it's a little bit, a bit out of scale actually. Uh, I lived in Vegas for a while, and when you're walking through the desert, you see a lot of rusted junk. People just throw their shit everywhere. Humans are the worst. <laughs> but, like, there was like a full, I was, I was hiking one day outside of Vegas near Red Rock. There's like a full exhaust in the hills. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> but anyway, it's been out there for a while. It doesn't get like that really heavy pitted texture unless it's in a really heavy moisture rich environment where it's breaking down that metal. So the drier, uh, less humid climates, your rust is actually fairly smooth surface. So in scale, you don't, I realize you just don't need a lot of textural elements to rust pigment. Anyway, that was kind of one of the things, but let's get back to this. Uh, so he says, not force drying and, uh, and applying to oils to dry. Yeah, okay, so I think I get what you're saying. We did a little bit that the last week, or last stream, I guess. And uh, so this is, we did a little bit here on that. Let me pull these off there, just stay on here. I did find some of the other pieces for this model and I've added some fresh color too, by the way. Put that in the Instagram <laughs> teaser. Just doing that yesterday, just doing some testing. So the, to me, this has got a poly cap in it. I'm gonna leave that on there. Let's see if we can get that. I'm gonna do a little, little zoom, zoom, get back into this. Okay. So to, uh, where was he? Relatable 100. What I like to do first, if, if my goal is kind of a dirty hole side like this, where, it's, where I've got some mud and some other stuff here, you know, my goal here is to get, get some effects down first, get some pigments down first, and then starts. And if you guys remember that, I speckled in some of the um, the oils and stuff into that. Now what I could do is I was actually going to show you another layer, and we'll do that uh, on stream for you uh, so we can see what that's about a little bit. So probably going to have to move the light a little bit, get a little bit of a shadow off that hole. Uh, but it blows my face out, so I tend to push it back. But anyway, let me get through this. I'll check your one of our, okay, I don't see any of the editors want to draw attention to themselves. Uh, here to wash the dishes now. Uh, you guys are the best. Thank you for that. I do appreciate it. But, you know, remember too, um, to that comment, a lot of those guys are, are friends. And I do try to play, hey, you know, we're all in this together and, and everybody's got their own take on this. And none of this is effing easy. Um, but I did write for a lot of the same magazines and publications and stuff like that. So I learned kind of what that was about. And one of the reasons I started RSP in terms of like why I put my name on the door, make my own stuff was because of the restrictions that happened through the publication process. And I thought I could do a better job. So I use my design training to kind of create a better book through design and then just the things I want to talk about with you guys. So I do feel strongly that, that I put my time in, if you will, earned my stripes, figured my shit out, how to do this so that you guys can kind of gain the best of this. Uh, and that was kind of one of the, it's, it's, it's a good point because I know those guys do work hard and, and it's tough. Uh, they're under certain conditions, if you will, you know, with the bigger chemical companies, you know, the paint companies that make this stuff, you know, they have certain guidelines and what they want to talk about and that's all good. That's their thing. But yeah, I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out. <laughs> Boy, you guys don't hold back, do you? I love it. So here, Luke, Luke Strivers, welcome. Welcome to the stream. I hope you will tackle a wing nut wings model at some time. I don't know if I'll do it on stream. Um, and I know I've got some big wing nut wing fans out there. Uh, a couple of you guys are, are really close to that company, the old company, the, the kits themselves. Uh, good friends of mine that are really into those. So I hope so. Probably a, a D1, you know. <laughs> I'll cheat little monoplane yeah I don't know if I'll do a biplane anytime in the near future 2022 we're gonna we're gonna tackle some other stuff but for now yeah Luke we're gonna we're gonna push you off a little bit I love you though thank you um, <laughs> yeah, it cracks me up because those if I'm scared of anything it's gonna be rigging uh, both naval and and biplane rigging because one I've like a lot of us never done it just never done it <laughs> like, okay I mean I've strung some stuff together but I've never done it seriously uh, and so, you know, rigging up, uh, you know, a ship or a biplane, uh, props to you guys. 
uh, no pun intended. And, and so, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, let's get going here. Let's get the show rolling. So hopefully it gets you guys a little jazzed up. That's what I've got planned for some stuff. Um, what I'm going to do today, uh, you can see we've got some primer exposed on it. So we're going to paint this up, uh, get some tire color on that wheels, on these two wheels, um, and then get some camel color going. So what I did was I, I did some airbrush testing. And when, let me get some pigments out of the way, just because getting the pigments out of the way, it's the messiest. Uh, let's get through this a little bit and then uh, we'll do some airbrushing. So let me let me answer one quick last question here. You apply pigment and soaked and let dry. Have you by scale laid oils, let air dry and soaked a sponge with thinner and picked up pigment and blended in with oil that was previously layered? The answer to that is I have not done that process, no. Um, trying to read, you know, by scale laid oils. Okay, so if you're gonna use pigments, if I'm using pigments in this manner, my first comment to that is you're just gonna cover them up. You, there's not anything, you're, you're not gonna see anything under this type of process. The dusting process, maybe you'll see some. And that's okay, because if you want a really subtle layer later, you might see some, and then what you're saying is apply more on top and then let all air dry, if I understand you correct. Um, there's no real difference between air drying and hair drying. The hair dryer just basically on a low heat setting, this just speeds that up. There's no real reason to let that air dry, unless you think uh, by experiment or whatever that you've seen kind of the the correlation of oils and pigments drying slowly that they do something slightly different that you're looking for totally cool for you but i'm going to tell you that takes for forever <laughs> like forever forever hours uh usually I, I don't have that kind of patience and i find that whatever effect you're probably trying to achieve i can achieve that a little bit in post in terms of doing it layer and layer however once pigments go down and you start touching them again you're gonna have some issues. Hopefully we'll, I, I'm not sure I understand your question 100%, but let's see if we can do some stuff and I'll show you how I do it and see if that helps because when we paint the road wheels, there'll be pigments on that, oils on that, and layer that up too. So hopefully we kind of, because I think there's something there and I'm just not, maybe not getting it 100%, but that's okay. Um, Mike says, doing rust with oils would be great. Still struggle with it. Okay, okay, yep. And also, guys, ask your question once or twice. If I don't catch it, because there's a few of you in here now, there's a few people watching. Um, woo, 63, we're getting up there. Let's see if we can hit 100. Let's get 100 guys watching this shit. Um, but that's kind of um, important for you guys. Uh, if I don't catch it, because I, I don't have an assistant or anybody, there's no little pop-up for me. I have to kind of read the, the chat. Um, say it again or I don't even mind if you put question in the, the word question in caps so I can scroll through and see it because I don't have a delay on or anything like that. There's a slight delay on your end, but not for me. Uh, and hopefully that kind of, because I do want to make sure I get your questions. You guys are, you guys start asking really good shit and that's makes the stream awesome. Even though I haven't done anything yet in 30 minutes. <laughs> Uh, let me go back up. Alex said he spent uh, knee deep with oil paint weather in my, my kit whilst listening to your first three episodes. Perfect sending. Cheers. Oh, you're awesome, Alex. Thank you, brother. Um, and I know we've had some conversations in the past. Uh, let me just refresh for you. You guys are new, haven't got the newsletter, if you're sending me emails, whatever. The printer's got three of the five in the works. Uh, they're a little bit ahead of schedule from where I thought they'd be. So I'm hoping maybe by mid July they're on their fourth and fifth book in terms of their process. Uh, it's going to take them. This is kind of new for us because we're grouping five books into one print grouping. Uh, usually it's about five to six weeks per book to print. We think we can probably get six to eight weeks for a group of five because they're going to overlap and, and, and run them through. So we'll see. Um, I want to, when I travel, I do want to do somewhere down the road where we do a press check with you guys. If you've never seen anything like that, it's, it's in a fascinating industry. Press checks are phenomenal. And the machines are like, we all love machines. But dude, printer machines, press machines, they're, they're something special. Um, but they are in Europe, and I'm not going to Europe. <sighs> Earliest, if I go to Europe, maybe for the fall shows, maybe if SMC and, and this all COVID shit, whatever. <laughs> I'm vaccinated, but I don't know where everybody else is. I know some of you guys are starting to get caught up. But anyway, that's kind of what, just quick, I know Alex, a lot of you guys are, are pre-order guys. It's all coming. Um, probably by Halloween, November, Thanksgiving, US holiday time, we should be completely caught up. That's kind of the, the long-term view. I'm pushing for like September that we get the rest of them all out and done. We'll see how it goes. 
don't hold me because I don't know. Kobe's doing a bunch of different shit. No. Um, so, but anyway. Ah, Ilya, hello, my friend from Israel. Welcome. Happy Independence Day. Yeah, to all my British people out there. Sorry, bro, we took the country back. <laughs> I love you. Oh, somebody was talking to me who lives in my old town of Pasadena who had moved from the UK. And uh, gee, if you're out there, if you're out there in the chat, I don't know if you're hanging in today, you're probably busy. But anyway, he's an expat Brit who lives in Pasadena, California. And we were talking because I'm from Pasadena. I lived there for about 10 years. So yeah. But this is fun. I will say one thing to all of you out there listening. I enjoy this a lot. Uh, the interaction with you guys is fantastic. But anyway, all right, enough bullshit. It's my problem. I talk too much. Mother always tells me, shut up, Michael. I know y'all call me Mike, but my mom's like, Michael, don't curse. You curse too much on screen. Okay, sorry, mom. Then my brother like watched it and he's like, yeah, your niece. <laughs> Keep your, watch your mouth. Sorry. I'm already in trouble. Okay, so let me get this where this guy stays super hard. Oh, you know what I need? Hold on one second. Oh, this will work. I have to do some. So when you set your pigments, while we're doing this here, there we go. Let me get this back. So I'm using the Lazy Susans. Uh, real quick, if you guys don't know about these things, you get these at, at Target, Walmart, any kind of like home goods stores, Amazon, whatever. These are three to five dollars a piece. They're they're quick, easy. There's other better stuff. There. I think there's what what's it called, the Octopus? I think Martin was using it the other day, and I was like, oh, look at that fucking thing. I mean, even he was like skeptical, but he's like, oh, that's pretty sweet. I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna be buying a lot of extra tools. This is I'm I'm in my little zone, so we're good. Uh, but these little lazy students are awesome, and they're lightweight. You can stack them up. Uh, which are great because there's certain projects where you need a little bit of additional height to raise that model to, to do stuff. Uh, pretty cool. But anyway, that's what these are. Uh, then I have like a little sponge and a paper towel because I do like to keep them clean. They will get messed up, especially when you start airbrushing. But anyway, get the surface you're working on as horizontal as you can. So that's pretty nice. Look at that. All right, sweet. Everything's going good. Uh, I am excited for the new camera. Uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Okay, let me get some... We'll get into airbrushing in a second, so let me just put a little bit of thinner in the airbrush. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna switch some, we're gonna do some mission models today. So for the contentious, how does that work? We will have some conversations. And I know some of you probably will have to run for barbecues and get out of here if you're an American, you gotta do some some uh, holiday stuff. So let me just... Oh, I gotta drop the PSI. So when you do this trick, um, I'll do the light dusting first and maybe relatable 100. This might um, be what you're talking about. So hold on here a sec. I gotta go down to my compressor. I'm dropping the PSI to like one, two PSI. Oop, that's almost too low. Okay. It's because what you're gonna wanna do, just get the airbrush set first so I don't. All right, so I got a little uh, acrylic thinner in my airbrush. Today we're doing mission models, so um, we're moving from, and the reason I did this switch, sidebar, so I used the Tamiya thinner the other day, right? Well, I left it in the airbrush, forgetting about it, and then I went to paint some mission models paints, immediately had some problems. So we'll have that conversation coming up. Stay tuned after the commercial break. Now, boys and girls, pigments. So let's take a little bit of light. Um, Actually, let's reverse this because I want to show it this time so you can see this. With a little bit of high contrast, we're going to do some dust work real quick, just to recap. Oops, say hit the camera. Sorry. So I'm just dropping a few down in there right like that, okay? This is for a really thin dust coat. Just, just showing you some technique stuff real quick. Just covering the surface I want, and that's a matte coat paint, whether it's a varnish or clear coat. I work from the straight matte paints, but you want pigments on matte. That's where it's gonna work the best. So that's on there like that. We're gonna make a little bit of a mess. Let me grab a fresh paper towel. Hold on one second. Because I don't wanna lose my keyboard here to pigments. So what I'm gonna do here is, so I've got the airbrush, two, three PSI. Just kind of spits, and we're probably call that a little bit around a foot away. And it's gonna blow some of them off. 
That's layer one. See how I just spit that down? Now let me see if I get the, okay, so you can see the, the tip of the airbrush coming in. You guys can see how that hits a little bit wet and it dries almost instantly. So that's just kind of fixing those down real quick. That's layer one. Come back in, same thing. Tap that out. I don't, I don't like physically scrub. I just, I just kind of stipple. There's so much equipment in my way. Someday I'll get to model for myself. <laughs> anyway, so I do apologize for the camera. Same thing. See how it's starting to get a little bit more of an even dusty look. And I'm using a darker shade just so you can see it on the whole color. That's all I'm doing here. Um, but that's kind of a, that's a quick, repeat that three, four, five, six times. Um, trying to think. Stay right there. All right, pulling up the old school. <laughs> and we'll have a, we, we can ask questions and stuff while I do this, cause I'm gonna, Le tagger, le tagger. That right there, that's exactly what I did right there. That's the steps to do this. About five or six times, pigments, dust it with the, uh, with the brush to kind of get it in the surface a little bit, and then airbrush that fixer right onto that. And then what I did is I put a big juicy stain on there, which we'll do, we'll do right now to show you. So that's what I'm talking about with the dust pigments. It's in Tank Art 2 with, with the, there's a little chapter in that and we showed that last stream as well. But that's a great dust technique for the lower hull areas of vehicles. And even for aircraft guys, if you wanna use pigments, uh, exhaust, whatever, that's a trick right there to kinda get that in and get that going and then just spit that fixer on there. Boom, done. Uh, you can't mess with this too much. You can't touch it too much, but you, you can do some stuff. Let me get some questions here. <clears throat> okay, yeah, and I'm gonna keep the contentious paint conversation to a minimum. Uh, I don't engage in it. Uh, I've, I've done my time with paints. I don't use lacquers. If you don't know, I just don't use them. It just doesn't bother me. I don't use them. I don't really give an F. Uh, it's my health, it's my body. I don't use them anymore. I use them for a decade. I can't tell you how many problems I had between headaches and skin issues, reactions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You guys probably heard this now, but I'm a water-based guy. And to Gumpla, we will have a heart-to-heart -heart on strength of acrylics bonding to the Gumpla for movement, for chipping, of uh, uh, flaking off, not, not uh, weathering chipping, but Gumpla guys have concerns for, for because they move their, their models. So we'll have that conversation in chat too. Oh, happy Trader's Day. <laughs> Fair. Cheers. We are. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll keep the paint. I know it's contentious for you guys. I know some of you have had some legit problems. Um, and let me get some questions. Let me, let me, there are some few questions. Ilya, I see you. Okay, cool. Relatable, we'll keep going, don't worry. Keep asking, I'm hoping we can resolve whatever it is you're, you're looking for. Um, any idea of products to speed up oil drying time? Okay, so real quick, Ilya asked in the chat, cardboard, it's, it's still going. As you can see the, the is that on the camera? Is it zooming out here? I should go over here, switch. Yeah, you can see, oop, just put my finger in that green. So the black is juicy. That's all from the black. <laughs> uh, these are the Windsor Newtons up here. And so you see, this is a minimal color palette. So today we're getting a little bit, the boss yelled at me the other day. He said, dude, that is the messiest oil palette. He goes, he goes, dude, what are you doing? So the boss yelled at me. Uh, so we're tightening up. This is a, a lot more workable palette because I have a lot of space in between the mix on. Uh, I'm using way less oils. Uh, quantity wise so that's a little bit more efficient process use um, but yeah so Ilya oil paints and it doesn't matter if you quote unquote use an oil, oil paints for weathering or you know you're, you're going hard on OPR this is step one get them on the cardboard that pulls out the linseed oil that'll reduce the drying time dramatically down to minutes and then uh, the golden tool I need like a gold one don't I <laughs> somebody's gotta make like a gold hair dryer you know, be like the rappers with the gold grills. I've got the gold hair dryer. <laughs> um, hopefully that helps you. But yeah, hair dryer and the oil palette. Boom, super easy. Um, 
Okay, so model guys, I ordered uh, TA2 after the plastic posse. I hope you, I saw TJ. I don't know if Scott and, and, and uh, Banami are around, but anyway. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Couple, couple, probably early part of August, you'll see the actual arrival for you guys. Mid, middle August, probably for shipping. If shipping stays chill, it's going out of control. No, it's bullshit. Okay, let me see here. So once I said earlier, happy trader state. Yeah, I got you. Wasn't been using the model armor volume, but it got complete set and it's superb. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, pick is really sharp on my teeth. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so we're at true 1080p. I had a little problem in the first stream, but we, we've tightened that up. Um, Got to admit, to look the MM acrylics. I do too. Uh, probably the best acrylics I've used. It's yeah, it's debatable, but I, I agree that I think because of the organic pigment compound that they're using, you can do more with them once you get really, really comfortable with them. And we'll we'll talk about that in about 15, 20 minutes. We're I'm, I'm rattling too much. Um, yeah, I, I'm I passed the the so if 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 it's beautiful, and I I can't lie about this. The non smell. None of this smells for me. There's no odors from any of this stuff. I don't smell lacquers anymore. And I don't smell enamels anymore. And Adam, I love you, but your stuff was from Chernobyl. I don't know what was in those those enamel thinners or the, the stuff. You'd open those bottles and it was just like, holy crap. And, and unfortunately, the chemical world is, is just like that. And I just, I had to make that decision. The benefit is the odors are gone. So I can I can do whatever any time of day. And it's beautiful and no headaches, no headaches. Um, so anyway. Which is great. I used to have tons of bad headaches, even with the, with the mass and stuff. Um, but anyway, so that's one of the main reasons for it. But anyway, we'll talk about how to maximize the strength of a water-based acrylic. And we'll talk about life color Vallejo mission models. Um, and I, I don't want it to be competitive. So if you use what you use, just understand everything I show you, you can use for whatever brand you're into. And I don't care past that. That's your choice. So just, you know, that's I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Because I know it gets a little testy. Um, but yeah, so where were we? Uh, my salmon will just cut up the watch pigments go down. Four is cool. Okay, we'll get right back to it. Um, Burgess, yeah, there's there's some UK dealers for the paint line. Because um, they do come from the US. Uh, and I know Domino Models in uh, Belgium is uh, gets them for the continent quite a bit. And I think some of the other big dealers do too. They've been around long enough. Most of the, most of the heavyweights have them. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we'll talk about primer. We'll talk about all that stuff. Plamo, therapist, what's up? How would you apply this to Gundam? So we have some Gundams on the back side of my workbench here, uh, and we'll get into this. It's the same. Technically, everything's kind of the same. What I just showed on stream with dusting that up and then spraying the little airbrush fixer down, if you wanted to rewind, if you missed that part, just go back and check it out. It'll work the same, and we'll talk about that. And we'll do a whole Gundam project. I'm gonna do, for you that know, Bandai GP04 RE100 kit. It's my old test model. We're gonna repaint it on stream over the course of time. So yeah, we're gonna do a lot of gunpla, brother. We're gonna do a lot of gunpla, um, which is cool because I think the armor guys are gonna are gonna get a, aircraft guys are gonna get a kick out of uh, some of those kits. It's a good. You guys might even be start buying some. Um, so invested in what is this here? So Mark says he invested in a, a bench fan extractor. Okay, yeah, I, I so I rent. I'm screwed from the start, and the windows you see behind me they open like six inches this way. Like you can't vent anything. So I'm I'm I've always been screwed with the rental part. Um, <laughs> Clinton, yeah, post post a link for the hairdryer. Uh, I got that at, at Target in the United States. Um, it's just a ten dollar. Just go to the, the the airbrush section where the makeup and the, and the ladies' hair product stuff is, the hairspray and all that stuff. It's all right there. Um, yeah, yeah. Chris confirms that the smell of the, the, the wilder stuff. Yeah, but it's okay. Gee, there he is. There's my boy. Okay. Uh, metal metal finishes. Ah, yeah. Good question, Gary. I actually had a little uh, in-depth combo with with John Tamkin and Mission Models yesterday about metallic finishes and when to introduce them, particularly about chromes. There's a bunch of in the Gunplug community on Instagram and stuff. There's a lot of uh, conversation about chrome paints um, and how best to achieve true finishes and stuff. And I know I don't know if Will's going to pop in today or stuff. I know he's done a lot of work on the chrome paint conversation, uh, all that kind of stuff. Yes. Gary, I'm not sure when though. Um, it is kind of on my bucket list of, now a natural metal finish for, versus some of the other stuff too for the AC guys. Um, yes, I just don't know when is kind of what I'm, I'm trying to ponder in here. So anyway, yeah. guys are guys are happening. I guess the holiday weekend, everyone's just kind of chilling. Um, yeah, it, it is. And I think, I think for you guys, so Alex is, is kind of confirmed the odor thing. There's a there's a seminar. I want to say maybe it was Mosin. 
Mosin or, or BSMC, the Belgium show, where you were, were like, everybody was like maybe at the edge of the table in front of me, the first row, and I'm airbrushing into them. And dude, I'm telling you, like fr freaking out. I'm like, holy shit. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm using like water base. And it was like that whole, like, the, you're like, oh yeah, dude, you guys are fine. So it is, it's cool. I, I do I do appreciate the health factor benefits that come with the water base system. I do actually. And also disposal. By the way, disposal. Disposing of all that shit is, oh my gosh. And I tried to be really faithful to, you know, gathering it up and then taking it to like, what I would do is I would take it to like the, like here in the US, we have those like little auto parts stores, you know, like O'Reilly's or AutoZone or whatever, and they'll dispose of those harsh chemicals for you. But I would keep them like in a little like Tupperware thing and then just hand it over to them. That's what I was doing, but anyway. Yeah, so let's get to this. Um, bald guy using hair guard, no shit, right? And bald guy using hairspray. Trace me, you owe me. <laughs> but anyway. Um, Let's let's. I'm actually trying to let the oil palette kind of do its thing a little bit because I need to use some of this. But let's let's get into this. Sorry if I'm talking too much. I know some of you are just chilling, and I will because there's kids in this room. I will try to keep my language. Oh, what is that? Yeah, what else? Mean? <laughs> so bad. Like that's all my mom texted me because I sent her the link because I told her like, hey, I did a live stream. You know, and of course that's all she says. Can you not curse so much? <laughs> Come on, I love you. I love you. If you're there, mom, I love you. You know I love you. Be nice to your moms, boys and girls. Okay, so I put a little double side tape on the on my um, oil paint thingy so it doesn't move around. Um, and this is all the same stuff you've seen the first few things. I've just got a fresh palette. Let me just pull this. I'm just getting a little double side tape off this so these things so the trick with that is just basically double side tape if you're gonna do some of this stuff for long stretch at a, at a bench uh, I'm clumsy <laughs> getting clumsier I was knocking shit over all day today stuff all day today sorry um, but yeah anyway so I'm gonna get a little bit of uh, some stains into this so relatable 100 I hope you're still there let's see here this is so I've got the pigments down where's my guy here it is so I'm kind of off camera a little bit, just for now, just because I got a lot of stuff in the way. So I'm just getting some dark brown oil, uh, juicing up a little thinner. And I need my little, my old tweezers, got my little tweezer, this guy here. So we're, let's flick some down. So I've got kind of a, oops, bumping into the camera, sorry. Okay, so the speckling. Get my, let me get my hands in the right position so I can do this. Let me do a quick test. Okay, nice and juicy. So this will be kind of like wet splatter. Money. That's money right there. So that's raw oils mixed off the palate. A little bit of thinner. Kind of on the wetter side. And then straight onto a dried pigment. And so obviously we're not talking about... There's no varnishes involved, none of that stuff. This is, you're seeing stuff one-to-one, -one, guys, by the way. One of the key things to live streaming like this is that you're gonna pick up unedited content. There's no me fussing around. This is how it works. Um, and the music's cool. I think I solved that problem. Uh, this is DJ Eric, lo-fi. Yeah, talking about, uh, and see how gentle if you watch that brushwork right there, so I'm probably that distance there, and I'm kind of ang. Whoops, <laughs> just jammed that brush in. So just as you know, the the the. Oops, I'm trying to get this here. Let's let switch. The cameras are so close to the model. There's no there's no room here. Um, I the camera coming in has has a bit of a zoom to it, so I can pull. I love the phone. Don't get me wrong. It actually has been working really well. We're gonna put a camera up over here so I can zoom down on this. So I've got, I'm just, I'm too jammed up. The mic's right here, that's right there. Anyway, so see the angle of that? I'm angling this guy. That's how I'm aiming. I angle him how I, where though I want those splatters to go. And see how they're air drying? So Relatable 100, that's kind of what I'm talking about. I put down the pigments, that's splattering some oils and some stains. And that's just, that's like layer one, but. That stuff in there, guys? Dude, if you're doing, well, if you're doing something like that that's dusty and has like just general use splatters, that's it, man, I'm done. Literally done. 
I just have to keep talking here, so I have to figure out other stuff to do. But but that's how simple that goes. Um, and there's nothing really I need to do more because if if we get in here. So you can see when they went down, you probably saw two to three times the number of stuff hit wet. And then as it dries, because of the, the slight variations in opacities, some of these are pure oils going down. You're getting that variation automatically and see how under the fender, get down in there. So you're already getting some early work where, where that there, you don't have to do a whole lot more to that. Cause you're never, once that track goes across out, you're never really gonna, and if, there, if you use the side skirts, you're never really gonna see much. So we got a little extra on the top up here, which happens, no big deal. Where is my cleaner over here, sorry. I've, I've tried to separate my OPR brushes because we're gonna do some uh, different work with different stuff today. A little quick cleanup. Now what I'd probably do if, when stuff like this happens, get the zoom to work. <laughs> It's another reason the phone's going to go probably a little bit sooner is, is it's, it's auto zoom is really slow or it doesn't quite like if I'm not on it. So that's a streamer issue. Uh, for, for edited video content, it, there's, it's actually quite a bit of a different context of how you work with the cameras and everything else. But for live streaming, without an assistant, you should go hire a little cutie out there somewhere. Come help me out. Uh, so there, just kind of cleaned up that little guy. And then what I could do here, because there's just a little residual, and probably what I would have done was just be a little bit more careful, maybe put some post-it notes over the paint job to, uh, to maybe put some post-its to protect that, but that's no big deal. So I just cleaned up this, the extra stain that happened, which is normal. So that's what you guys want to see. A little hair dryer. Okay, that problem solved. Okay, so let's set this back up. So now let's add a thicker application of pigments, like what we did on the, on the, the rear section. Get back in camera, zoom back out a little bit here. Right. I had my hair dryer delivered. Amazon dude. They have figured out some of the, the world's issues with shipping, haven't they? Uh, really changed our world. Uh, and I'm able to build the stream equipment up by, you know, I, I had to research the this camera here. This is a little just an Amazon zoom camera thingy. And then the microphone. So if you're gonna do this kind of stuff, the most important thing. Uh, if you have to buy something is the mic get a really good mic that's a big deal and i have a lot of echo in this room uh it's not too bad in post i could probably clean that up even on an edited video but for live streaming it does its thing so. hey there is model offer so uh would really help yeah getting the right shots but no i appreciate that yeah it, it is it is i know i'm on one man show and you're kind of like the whole thing so to, I'm gonna cover this up. So unfortunately this is what's gonna happen when you do this kind of stuff. But I just wanna show you that demo. That probably little few minutes there was, was worth it though. Yeah, I do the same thing. And Mark says I spend far too much time watching stream. So I actually fall asleep. You know what I watch when I fall asleep guys? The guys that turn uh, the wood bowls and vases on the internet on, with, on YouTube. That guy named Andy Phillip. And he's got like a 1.5 million followers or something dude. Amazing, just crazy amazing. They take a, a tree stump jimmy it up to a lathe and then they what they turn out with it you're like all right I, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna go yeah i used to love uh in shop class back in school and stuff let me get my oil brush on here no, not that guy out of here i want to keep him kind of so i'm doing pigments early just to kind of get them out of the way i did it at the end of the stream last time this time we're gonna kind of get them out of the way first. Cause I want I want to airbrush the wheels and stuff like that. So you can just see I'm tapping in the in the light. Just getting some general overall coverage. I'm gonna grab some of the medium, a little bit darker tones in here. And I'm kind of tapping that over the over the lower edge even more. And I tap, as you can see, you can see, I'm tapping it on the tip of my finger and not touching the model. In this way, in this way, none of the pigments are disturbed. You really want to get this textural element to it. And again, the relatable 100, I don't know if this comment in here is, uh... yeah, for sure. Rick's like 50 minutes away. Yeah, we should do some joint streams and stuff like that as we get going here and, and all that stuff. It'd be kind of fun. So 
So now I'm just going back with a little bit of dark. Let's go a little bit richer in here. But you can see all that previous work is gone. So you are going to lose. If you do it this process, you will lose whatever's underneath. That's not the end of the world though. Because I'm trying to show like a dried mud texture and all that stuff. So that's a good little grouping of pigments on there. And this is general, just this pigments 101, how I do them. This is pretty normal. Um, let me get some fresh thinner in a little cup here. Okay, so I've got a little thinner in the cup. This is Mission Model Center in this case. It's the Mission Model's base paint job. So I'm gonna get my eyedropper. So now I've got uh, some thinner in the eyedropper. The reason I have to transfer that is it's in a dropper bottle and I, it's just the way that dropper bottle works compared to how much, I get more control out of the eyedropper than in this particular case. So get that drop, kind of get that first one down. Okay. Move over a little bit. See how that capillary just kind of absorbs. You can go under the edge of the fender here and touch that drop to that and that'll drop it down into that joint. My head, wish. Yeah, so this is kind of absorbs in. And see how, you can see how that just started to kick a little bit, that capillary. And see I'm being gentle. I'm putting that drop kind of where I want it and it's, it's, it's hovering above the surface about two mils, three mils, about an eighth of an inch. And if I'm being honest with you guys, dude, that music is like on point today, right? Like I could just chill, do this all day, go to a barbecue later, have some fun. This is this is good times right here. And I think it's important. I hope you guys see this too. Boy's not stressed. This is this is easy work. This is fun, easy work. I drop some pigments down. I'm putting some thinners down. I got some music on. I got you guys in the chat. Um, I hope this comes across. The simplicity of this the the ability to recreate this for you guys if i'm being this guy for a second i want you guys to do better than me meaning like i know what my skill sets are and my goal here is one of my primary goals of rsp moving forward into the future like rsp like version 4.35 whatever i'm at now <laughs> i've changed a few times is to really get that across so that you, the simplicity of all of this, the solution-based ideas that I try to use to incorporate to you guys so that you can go to the hobby shops, support their businesses, the, the paint companies, all those guys there, and all the other publications and stuff, and grab it. And so like, even when you read somebody else's work and they're talking about stuff, this connects those dots for you guys on that little bit more empirical level. Like, how do you really work with pigments? And then use that for your own stuff. And then I want to see you guys on the contest table I was going through some photos and you can see how I don't have to mess with this. Like I could talk to you guys a little bit. Um, it's no big deal, there's no stress here, except for when I bump the camera. Put that drop right on that suspension arm there. Okay, we've got this little dry hill right here. So go just to the edge of it, around the side of it, drop in the previous spot, and then drop around the other side. Now see how that's starting to absorb right, right in there? Get, let, give that a few minutes and it'll keep absorbing. Move over somewhere else. Oops, touch the uh, dry sprocket there. And if you get a spot, like see how it kind of cleared down to the base layer a little bit? Don't sweat that. And you don't want to, you don't want to go nuts with the eyedropper. You don't want to flood this surface. The wetter you make this, if you do want kind of that, uh, and yes, you can layer this up, but you can just keep going. You can just go nuts with this. You can go layer, 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 layer. Um, and you can see I went right over the old work over here. The wetter you make those pigments, like it smooths it out. Very similar to the paint when you start, the more thinner you add, the, the more uh, flat or the smoother it becomes because the, everything's getting kind of crushed by the thinner and, and dissolved out. I don't know what the term is. 
But the same thing with the pigments here. So if I, if I wanted to go super thick application of dry pigments, and then a really heavy wet application of thinner to get kind of a really cakey, uh, you know, really dried heavy, you know, spring thaw, excuse me, spring thaw in, in like Russia, and then really crank the hair dryer on that thing, you'll get it to crack. We should do that somewhere down the road too. Maybe we'll do it on one of those other guys over there. Maybe the T34 when we get to it. I've been wanting to fix that gap forever. I feel so bad about that model. That was a gift from a friend. I don't know if Dimitri's still out there. Uh, missing links, Dimitri Kayatkin. You guys might remember him. Fantastic model builder. Uh, passed me on that T34 to weather and, and I ended up using it as a demo model. Um, but anyway. Let me get some quick questions here. Your music is very cool. So tap it for the live stream. Yeah, I'll, 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 put, I'll actually put that in the description, uh, what I'm using on the music too, by the way. I should have done that before. And I'll, I'll add it to the other stream. It's the same channel. But I put the looper button on, so it, should, it shouldn't kick off. What was, it's a 27 minute album. It kept stopping at 27. I didn't realize I talked for 27 minutes. It's just crazy. But anyway, yeah, you guys are, you guys are quiet, so that means you're watching me, sweet. Um, yeah, it's cool, it's beautiful. Love and using pigments, submission for paints for armor. Yep. All right. We still had options. Yeah, there's there's some places we don't. Um, and I know, I so G Construction in, in the chat there, uh, he lives in, like I said, it's in that Southern Cal area. You know, Burbank House of Hobbies is one of those that has survived this and they figured out how to do this. And that's a great store that sells both online and they're also brick and mortar that's like old school cool. You know, you walk in and your eyes go, whoa, they got, they got shelves of boxes everywhere. Like that thing we love, they, they're still there. So there's a few. There's a few that have kind of, you know, I'm like, I'm bummed Horner Hobbies isn't around anymore, but again, that was an old school hobby shop, mom and pop shop, for like for real. Um, but anyway, so this is wet. And we can, we have a couple little spots in there that just kind of didn't go too well. No big deal. Come in a little bit of more light. Pick it up on the brush, like so. Tap that right under the wet. Cover some of those little spots up. And there was that little dark, you know, the paint pigments, the way I use them, you're going to get some anomalies like that really dark spot right there. Uh, it's just one of the one of the pigments is just kind of clumped up into a, like a black color almost. But you can kind of kick that down. I use them. Cool. You know, look at that fun little thing. So this here just kind of gets that little and that moisture that's already on there, that fixer that's already on there will absorb the dry pigments coming in. And you can just see I'm just gently tapping in. I'm not putting a ton down. brush get those out of the way we'll wrap this up in a few seconds so then what I can do is this uh, brush over here whoops get on camera dude okay so this guy here this was what I what I did the flicking stain earlier the speckling same thing juice it up just getting some dark brown oil colors on here plenty of thinner where's my to, I always flick it on the towel just to kind of see where I am. Okay, a little sharp. I want a little bit more juicy. There we go. There, that's what I was flicking on. And this is just adding an, another, ooh, got a big juice mark on that thing. This is the, it's the challenge of the angle, the cameras and everything. That's okay. And then what you can do. Okay. So like under the base of the uh, road wheel support, the support thing up there, you know, you can, you can really, so this is putting some wet oil on the wet pigments with figure. Uh, with fixer, <laughs> not with figure. Uh, dude, I'm losing it. I'm losing it, my friends. So you're gonna get a little bit of a mixing of chemicals here, but it's it's a pretty, um, they get along okay. It's not the best of things, but we're gonna dry this here in a sec. These are like just some early stains, and when they dry, they'll, they'll dry to like a hard, uh, dried edge a little bit. But you can see I'm touching, I'm actually touching the support. I'm not actually touching the pigment that's in there. I'm trying to get the, 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 the pull of the capillary down into the pigments, like around the, the, the dry sprocket mount over here. I'm touching the bolts a little bit. I'm not really trying to get onto the pigments and letting that 
I'm letting it blend into the pigments. Same with the uh, leaf springs in here. Now I know Hetzer wheels will cover up most of this anyway, but I'm not super concerned about it. So that's just kind of early um, pigments, some stains, get them all in there, boom, done. Uh, this actually goes really, really fast when you're in, when you're in the groove. This, this is pretty straightforward. Let me get that stain out of there too. So we got a little bit of a little hiccup here. Hold on, let me set this back up. I just used a little support sponge there. See how we got a little, little oopsie? Yeah, no biggie. This one's juicy. This one's probably gonna leave a little something. I gotta do some work. Yeah. So it is leaving a little bit of a stain because that's on raw paint, matte paint. We got some up here too. Usually when I'm doing this, you're gonna wanna protect the upper surface a little bit better. Um, take, that, take that to heart. <laughs> Watching Rinaldi screwed up, and it's no big deal. All oh, that's fixed. But that just, it kinda just adds to the... Some of those other pigments that are going over there. But I'm using it to kind of an advantage like this maybe some sort of early stained or chipped or whatever and it, you know I'm brushing it vertically because that's the direction of the model um, just to kind of get that just trying to get that extra little flex mark that kind of went up there off okay, we'll dry all this here so now with that all basically set up go to the hair dryer so that's pigments 101 uh, and we'll keep going with pigments in the future Yeah, for so if you went back a few little bit in the um, in the video there with that first layer I showed you for fine dust, that's what I was doing the first time, putting a little bit of dark dust down and then flicking some stains, and that and that's using the um, the airbrush trick to, to blow the fixer down onto the pigments. That's the dust technique that I use, or one of them anyway. Uh, I keep going a little bit. I forgot what we're actually talking about. You guys want to see this? Yeah, you guys are just chatting amongst yourselves while I get into this. Uh, hello from Chile, Port, uh, Puerto Montt. Nice. Yeah, I got invited to the show in Chile that you guys have uh, right as COVID hit, I think it was. I can't remember what year or what time of year. Um, but that's a show I think in the future I'll definitely come down and visit. I know I've got some interest from guys in uh, Argentina and some other stuff. So I do want to go to South America. One of the perks, man. I might as well live it up, right? These guys are gonna want me to come in. And I know I gotta do IPMS Nationals. I'm not doing it this year in Vegas, even though it would have been convenient. Um, it's not a good year for me to be traveling around right now. Like I said, I'm not going anywhere until the books are done. It's kind of what's going on. Um, but that's not meant to, to be any kind of uh, affront to anything. So I'm just trying to get rid of some of these pigments here. So, so yeah, they do make a bit of a mess. So I tend to do when I do pigments, when I'm actually doing pigments for real on the models and stuff like that, I do kind of separate, like it's a pigment day. Get everything prepped and cleaned and ready. Even, you know, if you have to cover the table, uh, you're going to get this stuff everywhere. I still find little pigment stuff <laughs> from last week. Anyway, let me just kind of, yeah, because they do make a bit of a mess. Get this a little bit cleaned up here. So, but I keep them in these, like I said, these, these are old. And I think you can still get these on Amazon. I think they're still around. These are the classic 35 mil plastic and they, and they don't spill you can shake these up so you put the pigments in here shake them up they're good they're airtight they'll last forever i actually uh when i decant hairspray if i need decanted hairspray or if i don't have a chipping fluid bottle handy uh i'll put it in one of these 35 mil containers and i've had hairspray in one that lasts uh, for a couple of years you know you decant like like half the half the thing of hairspray put a little piece of tape that says hairspray on it you can pour it in the airbrush whenever you need that. That's a quick little decanting, uh, you know, 101 there. I don't, uh, we'll, and we'll roll into hairspray slowly. We'll probably get into it a little bit more next time. We're not gonna, I don't think I'll be doing hairspray today. I don't need to, because I'm gonna show you something here with the Mission Models paints. You can be like, dude, F off. So, um, yeah, but hairspray, you can decant. Uh, you can use it in your airbrush. Um, the chipping fluids, you know, whatever product you use, they all basically work kind of the same principles. 
Some have slightly different variations and characteristics. And I find it actually over time now, because we've been doing this for what? When did that come out? 07? We've been doing it for a while. Uh, you know, have a, have a variety, you know, you build, you buy a couple of the different chipping fluids and you, they get slightly different variations and stuff for certain different techniques. And as you grow with it, you can do certain things with them. So it's, it's cool to have all of them. I'm still a aerosol can guy, the, the Tresemme is up there. Uh, and I even have a little, even have a little, little travel dude when I, when I, when I do the shows, got one of those in the, uh, the travel department of the store, a uh, little can of trays. The problem is, and you guys should see this right away. What's the problem? You see that number right there? It's not the three. So the travel sizes are the fours and fives, a little bit stronger uh, thing, but it's no big deal. But yeah, I like the three the best. Okay, I'm just trying to get these pigments out of here because we're gonna start airbrushing, making more of a mess. It'll be a messy day, friends. Oh, see, that's why I take that stuff down. Knock something over. Okay, pigments get you out of the way. Ah. Uh, is it Teodor or Tador? I don't know how to Schober from the Czech Republic. Hello, I love my Czech friends. That's where the printer's located, by the way. Um, I cannot wait to visit in you know maybe a year or so. I really definitely want to come out and see my boys in Croatia. Hit the Czech Republic, hit the printer. Uh, you know maybe swing through Germany again. I've been to Germany a few times now. Yeah, so good times. I love travel. Okay, we're getting kind of a little bit cleaner up here. Okay, so what do we got here? Let's, let's put this guy here. So what we're gonna do, I'll think this out a little bit. Oh, here, let's, sorry, I apologize for that. So that's the dried results there. So what'll happen is, whoops. In this thing. So the to me it fits pretty well. They don't they don't really need anything. Um, the road wheels just have the there's no polys in these or anything like that. So you can see it's gonna cover up a lot of the suspension. You know, once that track goes atop, you're gonna lose most of that. But you get the light right, you know. But that's just one layer, one or two layers of pigments, speckling some stains down. Just move on, my friends. You're, you're, you're good to go. Get off there. Okay. So what we're going to do is I need to put some rubber tire color down first. And then we're going to use... Uh, where did I put these guys? Uh, we got some stencils. Um, I've got my uh, circle template for, for the wheels. All that kind of stuff. So that's stuck down pretty good. Okay, good. So having the airbrush with all this in the way is a little bit interesting. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Get this over here. Get myself prepped up a little bit. Everybody good? Uh, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, so the so two G's comment on the fixer, the, the chemical brand fixers, ammo, AK, et cetera, et cetera. They're a stronger, more potent fixer. I don't airbrush in them as much. They're more for the like the eyedropper phase. If you need like a really strong bond, and if you're doing a really thick caked on layer, say maybe two, three, four mil thick of pigments, when they're dry, they're that thick. Um, after you fix them, like like that's a pretty thick layer of pigments. You're gonna want a fixer to really hold those and bind those uh, strong together. Making sure that was the right. Okay. So. Let's do this here real quick. See if I can pull this off. Okay, let's have to unplug this. Okay, camera's still on. That's the power supply of the camera, so we'll be on Wi-Fi. Hold on one second. Let's see if we can do this here, okay. All right, we should be able to move, there we go. Okay, so this is me holding the phone now. So let's get down here. All right, yeah, do you guys see that? It's not. If you don't know about Silent Air, this is a Super Silent 20A. Um, they're not cheap. That's probably market value around 700 US. That said, that's gonna last me probably 10, I bet you I get 15 years out of this guy. The previous stuff I was using was an Iwata air tank compressor um, that lasted about 10 years. And one of the delays I had was that the hose, this hose here, that's the Iwata airbrush hose, up to my little guy here. Um, was 10 years old and so it had cracked and I was getting an air leak and I wasn't holding pressure. But anyway, when you get down into here, over here, okay, so we 
have our, our, our valve here, our, our, uh, our, our pressure, you know, tells you what the pressure is. So that's about 12, 14 PSI, somewhere right in there. Yeah. That's about where I keep it. And there's a, there's a lock on this thing, it's really cool. Um, but that, you just turn this little knob for the pressure thing. Um, you know, you have your fitments nice and tight here. I got little wheel chokes for the, for the tables on wheels, so sometimes when I bump the table, <laughs> it moves. But anyway, that's the hose setup. But that silent air, it's been on the whole time. You dudes haven't heard this thing at all. It's genius. So if you don't have an air tank thing, uh, if you're into spending a lot of money for your tools, uh, let's pull over to the airbrush. So I've got a little, so this is kind of the setup. I've got my hair dryer on a little, little clip here, a little 3M hanger. Uh, and then I've got my, my thing strapped to the table here for the um, what do you call, airbrush holder. <laughs> Get your terms right, Mike. Okay, let's put this back over here. We'll talk about the airbrush. This is just quick airbrushing 101. Put the foam back into the holder. Okay. So, uh, I'm an iWater guy, but I do have a, a Tamiya airbrush as well. So this is the HPC Plus. So I use the airbrushes with the top cap, uh, the top cup. And I've got, this is my big cup one. So for if I'm doing a bigger project, they make these, uh, I think that the code, the HPCs, I think the plus means it's, it's, this is the bigger uh, container. I forget how, how much CCs this holds. Uh, it's a 0.3 on the, on the needle. And then down here, every one of you guys should be doing this. Truth be told, and it's not expensive. I think it's just like 15 bucks and this is probably whatever. Uh, similar amount. So for like an extra $30 US, this is called the Mac valve. So I've got my air pressure set to 12 or 15. And then with this little, I can fine tune that air brush pressure. So for those of you like the freehand camel, and this is good for everybody out there. It doesn't matter what your subject is. This is the kind of stuff, if you don't have this equipment, it's a game changer. It's a, it's a real game changer. So anyway, the Mac valve um, screws into the bottom of the airbrush. Just to show you real quick. No big deal. Just screws, just threads right on where the hose fitting goes. Just finger tight. And then I have the quick release down here. Most of you guys know about that stuff. And all my, so I just have the one hose and every, every brush has the Mac valve and the quick release. Um, double action, push down, pull back. That's it. And then I also have all my airbrushes. I don't know the name of these adjustable handles. I think they're just called adjustable handles. So that, so the needle travels through here. And as, as you pull, push down and pull back, it grabs that needle and it pulls that needle out of the tip, letting the thing flow out. That's how it kind of works, the basics. This, that's where the, that nut right there cranks down on the, on the needle. And then this adjustment right here on the end uh, is, a, is a, a movement restrictor. Well, we'll go with that. So when I pull back, and the reason this is key, push, push down, pull back. And if I adjust this, I can adjust that distance to a preset distance. And this is, say, the Yuhu intent. When you're doing that type of camo, like a, like a night fighter camo where you need the squiggles, and when you do the preset handle and you lock that down, you can continually spray in a consistent pattern for a long period of time without fatiguing your finger and also without fatiguing the airbrush so that you're always putting that consistent spray line down for that type of camouflage. It's a, it's a really nice piece to have. It's a little bit more expensive if they don't come with them. But I try to definitely, when I buy an airbrush every three to five years, make sure it's equipped just like this. That's basically what I'm doing. And I've got my Tamiya airbrush over here. Uh, this is a super fine, 0.2, so it's a little bit tighter. I find a 0.2, a 0.3, 0.35, covers the bulk of scale modeling. 0.5 for all your um, kind of flat coat finishes, gloss coat finishes. Uh, you need to spray something fast that's larger, 30 second scale aircraft, larger Gundam. A 0.5 can come in handy. Um, I've got one on order. I, I haven't really had a 0.5 in a while, but because it's kind of where we're going with some things, some of the chemical conversation, sometimes a 0.5 does come in a little bit handy. But 0.2 to 0.35, that range, fine. 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, you know, micron, um, that's up to you. That's totally your call. I just don't spray anything where I really need that second level of, of upper-ended. It's kind of sometimes for the ego, if I'm honest. Because uh, a Micron's four or five hundred dollars, you know, and I think Gunzi makes a, a similar brush for a couple, two or three hundred. So for for about two or three hundred dollars, that whole airbrush set that you see in here, these double airbrushes, um, covers me. So it's fine with that. A note on airbrushing in general, and this is let's get this out of the way. 
Again, not to be contentious and not to tell people what to do or to critique. The reason I'm saying this is to help. Use one airbrush per chemical type. If you clean with lacquer thinner, if you spray lacquers, whatever, put that in one airbrush and don't ever touch it with anything else. If you're gonna use Mission Models paints, if you're gonna use a water-based acrylic and a lacquer-based system, you'd better split those two airbrushes up and don't ever mix the chemicals crosswords. Just don't, straight up don't. I try to be really soft with my gentle advice on this one because it's a money issue. You gotta buy an airbrush and said, I get it. Just don't buy another kit for a while, it's fine. Trust me, you're gonna to wanna to put your money in the tools if you're new to this. And the reason I'm saying this is because when I did this switch, I was fighting, this is pre-mission models, so all this stuff, but I was going through Life Cutter, Vallejo, AKs, the first gen stuff, um, and then Tamiya, and I was doing a ton of Tamiya spraying, Tamiya uh, lacquer spraying, the hairspray chipping with Tamiya thin with water, all sorts of stuff through one airbrush. There was probably every airbrushing session I was going through, I had a problem. <laughs> driving nuts. It's enough to drive a man crazy. For whatever reason, I got another airbrush and I was using two airbrushes and it kind of happened naturally. But when I switched to a double airbrush system and then I said, okay, I put all, especially like when you start using clears and varnishes, that shit will gunk an airbrush up faster than anything else. It's like, good Lord. That's why I said earlier in the last room, I think if you're going to have an airbrushing problem and you're using a, a clear coat or a varnish, that term's interchangeable. I think clear coats is a U.S. varnish is more international. Same thing. Um, that's usually the, the, your primary concern is, is your clear coat spraying. You're going to have issues. If it's going to be an issue problem, it's going to be through there. So that advice, take it to heart. If you're going to take this seriously, if you're going to use double systems, if you're going to go between a water-based and a solvent-based system, your best plan of action is two, possibly three, or even have a clear coat airbrush. Like you just get a cheapie, you know, a $50 whatever deal just for clear coats and varnishes. Just Put it over there and don't ever mix anything else in it. I had a problem, like I said earlier, did X20A thinner, left it in the brush, put in another brand of paint and immediately had problems. Cleaned everything out, spent it back. And so take it to heart. I, I just had it happen to me. It's one of the best things, piece of advice you're going to have. If you're struggling with the brand of paint and in particular, if it's, if you're coming from the lacquers into a water base, from solvent to water base system, um, you're gonna to wanna to start with a zero airbrush. So either, you're either gonna base clean that airbrush out in a non-lacquer thinner conversation of cleaners, get it super clean, strip it all the way down, baseline that airbrush. And this is an important tip. That'll solve that problem for the bulk of, of when you struggle, say when switching to mission models and you're a big Tamiya or Gunzi or whatever lacquer you're using and you're still cleaning with lacquer thinner. Yeah, don't worry about it, dude, I'll clean it, you know, it's fine. Don't, just trust me, don't. And even when it dries and it's been cleaned, it, the residuals in there, just don't. You're gonna, you're gonna thank me later. Uh, just, there you go. Yeah, I've learned that, Jacob, yeah. And that's what it was, was I was, I was struggling so much. And this is off camera, this is 10 years ago, this is magazine production work. I've got deadline, I got all sorts, and it's like, you spend half a day cleaning airbrushes all the time. I'm like, F, off. So anyway, and it doesn't matter the brands too much. It's mostly a solvent-based conversation versus a water-based conversation. Um, if you have the funds, definitely do like a of like a Vallejo Life Color, you know, latex vinyl airbrush. That's a type of water-based paint system. And then you have the organic Mission Models water-based system over here, slightly different chemical compound, have its own airbrush, and then have all your solvents. You can run enamels and lacquers through because lacquer thinner will, will clear out all your enamels too. But you know, have a solvent based airbrush and just don't mix the thinners, don't mix the cleaners, keep it pure, airbrushing harmony. Harmony. I haven't had airbrushing problems in a long, long time. Like I'm talking that consistent, even tip dry. Yeah, I'll have some, I mean, we're summertime, so we're gonna have some, but it's no big deal. Anyway, get that out there, take it to heart. If you're asking for a birthday and Christmas present, guys, just get another airbrush. You'll thank me later. Okay, let's get some questions going. I know you guys have been chatting for a while. Um, <laughs> so yes, super dry, super dry. Let's up with the names, you guys kill me. Super dry beef. Do, is that, is that like, do I call you beef jerky? What do I call you? But anyway, uh, I've probably bought, I'm looking up in the closet behind the screen. Uh, that's the second can of hairspray. So I've only had to buy twice in 10 years. So we're fine. I suffer that embarrassment. It's like buying tampons. You just, you just suffer the embarrassment a couple of times, uh, you know, for your girlfriend or wife. 
Um, 35 mils are hard. Yeah, 35 mil film cases are getting a little bit harder. Yeah, buy like a pack of 10 off of eBay and then that should cover most of your needs uh, for the 35 mil film, film case. But they're still using, film's coming back, so they're still around. Uh, they're handy. Or something similar in anything airtight like that. Um, well, let's see, go back up a little bit. Uh, here we go. Mike asked a question. Uh, would that fine dust application work on the turret and upper hull? Or would... Yes, it does. Uh, so yeah, Mike, to that question, sorry I missed that earlier. Um, going up the surface of the model, you know, if you're if you're, you know, you're you're going up onto the upper surfaces, definitely. Um, tank art two with the allied with 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 the. Um, let me grab it real quick. Hold on. Grab the gray cover, old school. This guy, TA2. That Mike, what you're asking about? That's top of the M3 hull. Uh, dry pigment application, same technique that I showed with the Hetzer just now. Same process, exact. Boom, done. Yes, is the answer. It's a great little tip, little technique. <clears throat> okay, what do we got going on here? Oh. Okay, you guys are just on the hobby shop conversation. Sweet, there's some shop owners in here. Sweet, I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Rob Van Drunen, Orange County, OC, in the house. I'm an LA guy. <laughs> you know what I mean. Let's go Dodgers. Let's go Kings. Let's go Lakers. But anyway, welcome. Thank you for coming in. Um, Brooker's House of Hobbies, another one. Another amazing hobby shop, by the way. Fantastic uh, the hobby shop. But anyway, the pigments fixtures, I use fixer, yeah. So yeah, I think we've answered that question before. So I, again, to the answer the fixer question, uh, I use the thinners for just kind of general pigment work. And then if I need something really strong, bond, really strength, good strength, the, the actual pigment fixer from the brands, for sure. Um, and let's see, put my mom back on, I'm gonna look at those wheels. Uh, yeah, there we go. And then we got uh, Czech Republic, hello. Yeah, we've said hello, hello. Trades are made for the win. Yeah, they owe me some money. Should get royalty. I wonder if they notice that. Do you think they like actually notice that? Like, like. <laughs> anyway, probably not. They sell so much of it. Um, yeah, yeah, cool. You guys are gonna have. Yeah, you got to do uh, life stuff. Don't sweat it. I'm happy you guys are rolling through. Okay, Alex asks, how do you feel about textured acrylic mud earth mixtures versus pigments? Uh, started using this for texture and then tweaking the color with oil. Absolutely. Um, and that's one of those, and I've got uh, over in the other area, I'm gonna pull them out. I've got the Vallejo stuff, um, and, and there's other companies that make that stuff. Uh, yes, is the answer. I think you can kind of, it's, to me it's not really always been a versus conversation, if that makes sense. Like I don't, it's not like one or the other. Like if you can work with those, because some of those provide certain textural advantages, and they're built for that, um, that's what they're made for, whereas pigments, is limited in the, in, the, in the textural quality you can get. You know, you can play with them and depending on the thinner to get kind of a smoother look, a little bit like I'm going with more of a dry splattered, you know, as the tracks are rolling and stuff, stuff's kicking up and sticking. And that's just a visual appeal for me. I just like that look mainly because they get hidden, but if the light catches in there, you can kind of see that. But yeah, definitely uh, the key point of that though, to Alex's question was, is actually tweaking stuff with the oils to kind of get the final result. And that's what I would say too, either one will work fine. You, they probably play fairly well together. Uh, I haven't really dived into the textual um, weathering products too much in terms of, you know, they're mostly for diorama guys and, you know, mixing for bases and putting the vehicles in to blend everything in. Pigments get a little bit more limited in that conversation. So I do understand what you're saying. Um, but yeah, I would say definitely push those through because you're gonna get some of those products that, that do some specialized you know, it's kind of a multi-role aircraft versus specialized aircraft conversation. So yeah, it's kind of how I, pigments are kind of a really good general product for uh, earth effects, stuff like that. And then some of the textural stuff, it's a little bit more specific. That's what I would say. Um, yeah, so yeah. Do you save the pigments for last or just roll along with the work? So typically forest, my process is, yes, the pigment work is towards the end of everything. When armor conversation, um, Gumpla, uh, aircraft's probably a little bit different because exhaust stains go on at a certain point in the painting process. I don't know how towards the end of that kind of can be. It depends on kind of like the, t the, 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 the exhaust of the aircraft you're trying to really replicate and what you're trying to do. 
Uh, and it may just be an airbrush, so you may not even use them. So I'm trying to think out all the pigment guys, what you would be using for stuff. Um, typically, yeah. And the reason is to force you the process of the pigments because they're really susceptible to fingerprints, to damage from handling, anything of the sort. So the later in the process means you're gonna to be touching that model way less anyway. And then once the tracks go on, in particular with the metal tracks, you can, those you have kind of a, a holding point to hold it, and so you usually don't touch anything. And it's because of that. The damage to the pigments, is it's, it's a soft. Okay, so if you're not familiar at all, zero uh, knowledge of pigments, you can't varnish that and then seal it with a shell. It, it won't do anything. <laughs> You'll still crush them. So yeah, use pigments last, typically. It depends, the project will kind of dictate to you a little bit, but most of the general stuff, yeah. Uh, and even the dust pigments on top of the hole and stuff. Once you start doing that to like Mike's question earlier, um, Matteo Reich, no, I've never been to Italy, my friend. <laughs> I'm at Rinaldi, it's the worst, it's the embarrassment. Uh, but yeah, when you do the pigment dusting work and all this, realize you can't touch anything. <laughs> you literally no touchy touchy, so just back that off. Um, so yeah. Yeah, any any dark, any, it's all the same. So Mark, Mike's asking, uh, he works with German Grey, I would assume it would be the same. Yeah, so the general concept is, if you're trying to build contrast, if you have a, a camouflage color down and it's in a darker tone of an olive drab, a German gray, um, you know, NATO colors, uh, Russian 4BO, all that stuff, um, you know, even the darker gun plot, the dark reds, the dark grays, the dark browns and green, use your lighter tones of dust to build visual contrast, um, which is gonna be a better looking piece in the end. If you go to, like if you use like a German gray and you use like a dark muddy dust color, an idea like as the earth tones it's just not going to look as is probably as interesting so go with lighter tones and it's just basic don't overthink it just stick to the lighter shade range for the dust process on a darker tone and then the opposite for the lighter colors if it's a non-desert piece if it's not like north africa if it's just I'm trying to think of a scenario where it's just a like a like a dunkel camo in france and it's getting dusty in the summer 44 or whatever then you're gonna go a little bit tone on tone and it's not gonna be high contrast and that's okay, but you can push it into the darker shade of dust just to get some visual contrast going with that dust technique. So that's that's kind of what that, hopefully that helps answer that question. Um, and then we got last one here, good multi, good advice, multiple airbrush problems with airbrushing almost made me give up on mod. Yeah, it, 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 can, it can really struggle, Luke. Um, it is uh, something I've started to just kind of not put my foot down, but you know, if I want to be a little bit of a authoritative commentary on that with the airbrushing, a lot of the, the, the I, and I do read and see, and I don't get involved, but I do see it a lot is when people are especially trying new brands and I know Mission is just kind of, they're the new brand right now, but don't forget everybody, this all happened when Life Color came out. This all happened when when Vallejo was kind of making a big comeback as a, as a, as a you know, using the model air colors. We all had these same problems, moving from a Tamiya or moving from another brand. Even if you're spraying Humbrols and then you're moving over here, you're just having problems because enamels and lacquer spray another way, the solvent-based system works a different way. And if you just run your airbrush under the mental thing of that's a, that's a process and then water-based is a process. And I just use water-based to kind of lump, you know, what you guys call acrylics, I just call like the water-based conversation and then the solvent conversation over here. Because here's the thing, you can use a Tamiya with the water, like I was doing for years with the chipping, the hairspray chipping, um, to get fantastic results. So, you know, just be careful with, with the airbrushing, what you're putting through. And just, if, if you do clean a water-based system with a lacquer thinner, just back it off, start the process over, go with like a general airbrush cleaner product. Um, all of them work pretty good. And there's a few of them out there that are just like general airbrush cleaners. And then run that through, break all the parts down, clean them all off, and then run those out with water, get all that stuff off, and then run it through with the base thinner that you're gonna use with the paint that you're using. In this case, it'll be the Mission Models for me because that's what I'm using here today. So that's kind of one of the things. Hopefully that helps. You're gonna, you're gonna start hearing some, I don't know if you're hearing fireworks in my stream. I haven't heard anything yet. I hear the train going by. Anyway, So what I wanna do is a tire color, right? Is that what I was saying? It's gonna keep me on point with this shit. Uh, so I've got a dark gray, and I think I got a drop of black I wanted to use with that. Okay. So let's make up a quick tire color. Uh, don't use pure blacks. It's got the little 
mix your bottle. I've, I've kind of pre-mixed these earlier today. I made sure everything's going. I did some tests yesterday. Uh, which brush am I using here? Let's see. Is it, yeah, let me see. There's a train. You guys hear that? So up up here, I'm in I'm in the heart of, of Portland, and there's a freight line. I think it's the Northern Pacific freight line goes through. And I can actually see the over there. Yeah. The camera won't show because it'll just the sun will blow it out. But anyway, yeah, that's the freight line. It comes through about four or five times a day. Yeah, there's a few of those. But anyway, hopefully, let's see if I've got. Did I get all the questions? I get everybody caught up. Everybody caught up. Y'all good? You ready for some airbrushing? Okay, trace me for the app. Just making sure I got everybody. I'm trying to do a better job of the questions because it's, um, I think it's important. I think this is one of the main reasons you guys are here. Uh, I think you'll know by now this is stream four. Don't be shy. There's no really bad questions here. Um, I'm pretty open to skill skill levels. There's a few guys in here who I look up to. And there's a few guys in the chat who are just starting out. There's a few guys in the chat who haven't modeled in 20 years who just kind of come back. So I'm not trying to play a beginner advance. I'm trying to just give you straight up advice. If you want to do a dovetail join on your cabinet, this is how you do it. It's kind of that mental process. It's not really beginner or advanced. Uh, Timothy Wood from Maine. What's up, bud? That is, where is Portland to Portland, right? <laughs> it's about as far away as it gets, uh, at least in the States. Okay, let's go. All right, we're doing it. Too much talking. Okay. So we're gonna, okay, so I'm just doing it. Because the Mission Models paint system is, is on a more of a precise mixing scale, it's a little bit, uh, flexible is the wrong term. It's a very flexible system if you know how to use it right. Um, but for basic general airbrushing, about a 20, 30% thinning ratio. So it's good that because of the eyedroppers, you can measure precisely. So I put it, what, three or four drops of the gray and put a, like a drop of black. So what is that? We'll call, we'll call that, let's just call it six drops. I think it was around six drops. So what is that? Two drops of thinner. So these guys, oh, let's move, sorry. You guys are looking at me. Don't look at me. There we go. Okay, so with these, particular dropper bottles. And I think this works with other companies too that have the droppers. If you tip, if you tip it fairly quickly, let me zoom out just a little bit. So so this is the thinner bottle. This caps um, the, the flow of this a little bit, so let's go on the paper towel. So if I turn this vertical, see how it's coming out already? That's hard to control, but when you, when you tip it vertical, the vacuum pressure seals that. So what I try to do is when I mix this stuff, get out of the way a little bit here is let the first few drops that are gonna come out of there hit, hit a paper towel or something. That, that controls that a little bit easier. Then come over to the, to the mixer and then very gently squeeze one, come on, one, and we get two. There we go. I mean, where's my little mixer brush here? So this is kind of a dark gray color. Okay. And let's go with one more drop of thinner. Because it's a little bit warmer, I'm gonna go just a little bit more thinner, probably more in the 30% range. So with this paint, so like there's those conversations, the 50-50 paint to thinner, thinner to paint, whatever it is. So you're looking at about like a, like a three to one paint to thinner. That's kind of the ratio. If you work that way, I say 30%, about a third, anywhere from a quarter to a third percent is thinner for mission models works pretty well. It's pretty flexible. I uh, just want to make sure my pressure is right. Okay. I may not have made up enough paint for this, but we'll see how this goes. So this is, this is a high risk, high reward, right? Airbrushing live on a demo stream. Actually, you know what guys, one quick second. Uh, I don't have anything to hold this with, shoot. Uh, my bad. My apologies. All right, let's just use tweezers old school way. Okay. Okay. So we're just gonna put down a tire color first. Sorry, this, this is super cumbersome demoing paint job. <laughs> okay. So I'm about 12, 15 PSI. Is everything in focus, everything good? Everybody good? Okay. South Africa, what's up? So 
So I'm just trying to get a, a general tire color down because I realized I didn't have the tire color on this first. And I'm not going to worry about the back too much. Hold on one second. I want to make sure this is really in focus. This is the first time Michael's airbrushed in a, in a while <laughs> as far as being on demo. But you hear how that, you can hear it, how clean that is, how, that's what it should sound like. And this is just a tire color. Don't sweat it. Doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Um, here, it's gonna. Now I gotta first somewhere to put this. I didn't even think that out. See, this this is why the streams are important, so that next time I'll be better prepared with mounts and in, in, in little clips for holding parts while I paint. Because I'm gonna flex, boys and girls, by painting on stream, not edited. <laughs> just kidding. I don't care about all that stuff. So yeah, airbrush distance here, that's probably two to three inches away. And see how it goes down with the sheen? It's nice and smooth. And it is hard to airbrush with all the stuff in my way. I, I do apologize. This isn't, I'm, I'm kind of like. <laughs> oh, this is why I'm the master. Okay, I'm out of paint. Where's the cup? Made just enough paint for two tires. Hopefully that's enough. Did you hear that? That little click? There's your compressor. That's how nice those are. So it is worth that investment. If you have if you have the, the financial ability to invest in that type of compressor, silent air, this is the 20A. Uh, it's a good size for us. Uh, they make a ton. I think they're Italian. Italianos. Uh, so that's a little bit of Rinaldi tie in there for you. I do like that. Um, that's it. See how it goes quiet? It's pressured back up. I'm done. Okay, we're going to do a color shift. And then I'm going to pull out the circle template and we're going to spray... Uh, we'll do a green and a yellow. How about that? I just feel like working in green today. Let me just try this real quick. So the other wheel's already pretty much dry. There you go, super simple. I shouldn't be handling them, don't yell at me. I know better. But anyway, those are nicely done. So now, hold on, where's my little guy? So, I've got a few. I've got a few of these guys. I've collected them over the years. I think this is Lion Roar, maybe, maybe Voyager. Somebody's. This is a metal one. So the metal ones, these uh, these metal circle templates, uh, and you can see where I tape out for circles. What I'm going to do is is I'm going to find the size of that uh, center wheel, and we're going to mask it off, and we're going to spray the color now. These guys will scratch, meaning the fresh paint. You got to be careful. So I don't use them as much, but they have a great uh, measure, you know, they have a bunch of different hole sizes, so they do come in handy. Uh, the one I like to use in, in, yeah, rapid design. So I used to be a drafter back when I was a kid, you know, architect, all that stuff. So I have a, a few of these. Um, these are the ones I use. These, these are the, the, your classic drafting circle template. Uh, so what we're going to do here, and I, I don't know if that's the right, I think it's not the right size. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So what I need to do first is mask off the hole. So I use a little post-it note tab. Save your tape. If you're gonna do, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of runs of wheels and stuff like that, obviously you can you can tape them off, no big deal. I'm just telling you, save your Tamiya tape. All that Japanese tape, that costs money. Post, post actually, you know what? Post, I went to this office store the other day. Post-it notes aren't cheap, bastards. Anyway, just a quick mask. Post-it notes are always a great quick mask. So let me just double check that, make sure I got that right. Yep, fits in there. Boom. So what we'll do now is we'll spray the camel color. First thing I gotta do is clean my airbrush. Which is the least, you know, enjoyable. Uh, 
Let's see, what do we got here? Metal Temple Royal. Yeah, Royal Model. There it is. Thank you, John. So I'm just I'm just cleaning out. I'm just blowing some straight thinner through the through the gray to get it out of here. Um, Carol, yeah, thank you. This is uh, if you guys don't know, that is the Weatherly Building. Google it. Uh, I did my homework. 1928. It is the I believe it's the first, not one of the first. I believe this is the first high rise in Portland, Oregon. And I don't know how 12 stories maybe. I'm on six, so I look right kind of at the midway. I've got so I'll, I'll share some photos. Uh, I got some great pics. Uh, I, I just kind of like the blue sky behind that building, and that's north. So you keep going through Vancouver, Washington, up through Seattle that way, and then eventually you'll hit British Columbia, who had a terrible time with the heat apparently. Like they really struggled. None of us up here were built for this. So I've got Q-tips. I'm just cleaning out the black right now. I'm trying to hustle. Are we on time? Okay, we're coming up to two hours. Okay, that's cool. We probably won't get to a ton of oil work. That's no big deal. Everybody good though? Guten Tag, Carol, right? Is that, is that good? Is that, did I say that right? Guten Tag. Good evening. Bonsoir, to my français, amigos. Uh, Spanish, what is good evening for Spanish? Shit, I'm gonna embarrass myself now. I should know this. <laughs> okay, so I'm just doing a really simple rough clean. Uh, we're gonna just put some green in here. I'm just using the mission models thinner a little bit. Just hold it, just cover that up. A little, little bubble. And that backflow just kind of cleans the tip up really quick. And this is how you do it if you're, if you're changing colors fast, because there's gonna be times with three-tone camos and stuff like this, but because it's all one paint system, because it's all under the same thing, this is easy. Like I'm making a mess, it, I'm kind of jammed up in here, but truth be told, it's all, no stress, having a good time. Buenos tardes. Thank you, Mateo. I studied French in high school. Biggest mistake with learning a foreign language is if you're never gonna use it, good luck. So that was the lesson I learned. And then as an, it's harder to learn this stuff as an adult and, and trying to learn German and some other stuff. Okay, so let's put some, let's start making up a little bit of green. Yeah, I, I'm always impressed when the international travel, the, the amount of language a lot of you guys know. Um, props to you guys for that. It's, it's, if you guys didn't all know English at some level, this would be really hard to do. So I, I'm grateful, <laughs> trust me. That would suck otherwise. Um, yeah, so Luke, we did. Okay, we got the gray now. We're gonna get some color down. Uh, South Africa, Sydney, Warren, what's up? Welcome. Uh, Carol asks, I want to do German three-tone applied in the field. Okay. The original source shows many imperfections of the original paint, painted stripes and stuff. How would you approach this kind of subject? Okay, so field applied camo. Start with the factory process first. So whatever it is, in this case, German three-tone, in this case we actually have Dunkelgelb. That's going to be your first color. Tradition, I know there's a ton of conversation about it. Don't sweat this right now. Base coat red primer. Uh, base the model in a red primer, Dunkel Gelb on top for late war, for three-tone. They're gonna paint the green and the red brown on top. Just go with that theory. Don't argue the other stuff that, you know what I'm talking about, guys. Simple, keep it simple. Uh, and then using the photos that you've got, of course, and the subject matter, if it's a Tiger II, if it's a Panther, whatever it is being field applied, if it's a Stug, um, obviously use your references. And then you're gonna probably, I recommend two models, one a cheapie, and then practice that out first because you're going to airbrush freehand camo. If you're not really good with the airbrush, you know, you, you've seen right here how easy this is. Practice. Airbrush practice more than any other technique. Airbrush practice is going to be the most important technique for you guys. Um, straight up for everybody. Everybody listen to that. Airbrush technique. Practice. Uh, and then, Carol, um, apply your colors. Order doesn't matter too much. Um, I usually go light to dark, but the greens and reds basically play in the same spectral kind of value. They're, they're both kind of the same value. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Uh, and then if it's a hard edge camo, and if it's a mask camo, then you use your mask. Uh, we'll see if we get to this today. Uh, Edward marking mask. That was the cross on the Hetzer you saw. Super simple. Here's another. This is the drill, drill bit size circle thingy. That's another little valuable tool. Those are cheap. Um, and then the vinyl. Uh, this is solid scale. My boy Alex, I hope you're out there somewhere. Uh, also, DN models. There's a lot of companies that make you know camo masks. 
So maybe we'll use these today. Uh, I try to mask most of my stuff with, with the pre-cut stuff because I'm just lazy now. I'm tired of making my own shit. So it's, it's good. But yeah, that's, that's straight up how you do that. Um, Got to go, Mark. Thank you, bud. Take care. I appreciate you coming through. Um, yep, everybody have a good one. Did you have to leave? Uh, VS Models, why Adam is an opal? Dude, he's been Instagramming him. He's a little hoe lately. What is, what is Adam up to? No, Adam, Adam had went through a transition of careers. And he had to give up Wilder as his hobby company. So uh, from that perspective, uh, he did put a post out. If you're not following Adam Wilder on Instagram, uh, it was maybe a month ago now. I'm not sure. You guys might know better. Uh, I am doing a podcast with Adam and, and Uncle Uncle uh, Night Shift, Martin uh, Red Kovac, uh, through Plastic Posse Podcast. That's coming up. Uh, I'll be really excited for that. Uh, we'll let you all know when that happens. But yeah, we'll be talking and that could be something we talk about. For sure. But I know Adam is back as being kind of a, a scum modeler. And he's been posting a lot in terms of Instagram. So go so go check him out and follow him on Instagram if you're not VS Model. And I think I know who you are too, but I just don't, the name's not connecting to me. It's Silent Air. Luke, Silent Air. Um, yeah, you can Google Silent Air Compressors. It'll come up. And the 20A is, a, is the model version I use. And like I said, they're a little on the pricey side, I know. Because a $400 compressor was like, dude, that's a lot of money. <laughs> but... It's worth it. It's because I'm going to get a decade, maybe 20 years tops. If I'm when I'm 50, this might be the last compressor I buy, boys and girls. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, so depend. Carol's asking, would you make it more artistic or stick with reference, even if the original stripes are sloppy? Okay, so this is your call. You're the you're the storyteller. You're the author of this. What your goal? What your end goal is? If your end game is to be historically accurate, then yes, answer is follow your references. To everybody listening to any subject you're doing. If you're, if you're Canon and Gunpla, if you're aircraft, whatever it is, if you're end game, that's, that's what I'm talking about, references. And we should do this, um, we'll, we'll pull this, I'll try to remember for next stream, and we'll get to the color here in a sec, guys, I promise, I promise. Um, but you can see how easy that was, dude. I just airbrushed in like five minutes, no big deal. Super chatty. Let me, let me go on while we're talking, because I know we're running out of time here a little bit. I got about three hours on the headset, so I got I to gotta stay on point. Where's my greens? Okay, let's do a little bit of green. So we're going to do a little mix of olive green, RLM80, and a little uh, Reseda green, RAL6011. And these are just me picking greens. I don't really, I just need a green. I need a nice German green. Okay, let's get this guy out of the way. Um, but yeah, references, 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 references. Dude, I'm a reference hoe bag. So yes, definitely. Uh, I tend to play towards at least Carol in your, in your conversation here is is at least balance. If you're gonna go off story, then have it have a foundation. Uh, I did this with the Churchills in particular. Is that I find a lot of references that are close to what I want, and then I kind of just shift them into me. It, it definitely, you can do that because that helps build a signature style. That helps build kind of a. Um, an interest to the for the for the the viewers or the contest table the judges you can go on story and then go slightly off story and you'll find that's a really nice harmonious way to scale model where you're, you're kind of playing accurate now of course this is always up to you it's, it's not up to me but it's you make that call yeah okay finding good references to internet google go to all the web forums join all the facebook groups you can that are excuse me that are of interest to you these guys post references left day and right and then ask Hey guys, you know, here's what I'm doing. Anybody got a great resource? Um, you know, there's 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 a bazillion today. Um, I'm thinking off the top of my ground power. If you have the money to invest in ground power, Japanese publication, fantastic references. Um, they're old school, but they're great. They're still available today in terms of eBay and everything else. Um, but Troika, I'm trying to think. There's a lot of out of Poland, out of, out of Europe in particular. There's um, the German publisher. Oh gosh. They have all sorts of crazy stuff. What I would suggest to you, Carol, if it, you have a couple uh, publications on your, your your model subject, if it's a tank, if it's a tiger, whatever it is, in this case, German 3 tone, get a couple so you know the vehicle really well. Octoon Panzer, Japanese publication, still my go-to. I know there's better ones, I do. I'm not gonna get into it with you guys, but all that, but I, that's my still my personal, because I love how the Japanese describe the technical changes. That way you keep it locked in so that you don't F up like, hey man, you used the wrong, vehicle type whatever and then with your three tone and your references 
I have a couple good color references. I know AK and Ammo both produce great, like just color palette references, Osprey modeling, uh, great color reference stuff if you just need some quick, you know, whatever. And then of course there's always the internet for Google. So Google image search is, pff, answers all our questions. So anyway, work that way. Keep it simple, don't overthink it though. Don't, you know what I mean? Like really, if you guys are into this work, cause this, that's a question I know a lot of you have. So I'm giving Carol kind of the benefit of, yeah, thank you, military. Uh, I can't do it, I can't even read that. Uh, to my Polish friends, I apologize. Uh, how do you say that? Would, would Daknik go? <laughs> Let's fucking say that. The military books from Poland, that, that Panzer tracks, that's what I was thinking of, Octum Panzer, all great stuff. And I just, if, if you are into a certain subject, have a couple per tank subject, whatever. I have a couple Stug books. I have a couple Hetzer books. I have a couple Tiger books, a couple paint, and they're my Bibles. And then there's some, you know, when the heavyweights come through the 502 Panther book, you grab those when you need a Bible Bible, or you just ask these dudes, they'll help you. But Captain Oblivious always have a lot of trouble with black and white photos with the going and color and weather. Yeah, there's this. So you get deep now. We get deep. Reds can look black. Uh, grays and reds will look the same on camera. We'll, I promise we'll paint. I know. <laughs> Super bad today. Just yell at me, guys. Just tell me to spray. I'm, I apologize. Okay. Uh, who? Captain Oblivious. Tank Art 4, page 31. So what I did here, I can back this off a little bit. There's a little bit of a glare. So in this photo here, what I did in Photoshop is I overlaid the same photo and then cut it in half and then put a black and white version next to the color version. It's hard to see a little bit on camera. Let's see if we can get this. The glare. Okay, you see right in here, there's some. There's a scratch and hairspray chipping with the red. Same red up here, red. See how it looks? The red almost looks like a black. You can kind of pick that out in the black and white photos for that type of thing. And see how the creamy white goes like pure white? But notice over here, you can't see any of the chips. But down in here, you can see all this little grit and grime and um, trying to see if I got a color photo of that chipped area. I think you can kind of see. So the red goes left of the seven in that same photo. And I think it dis yeah, I think it's right over here. You can kind of pick out the spot. This is what makes it so hard to see why Panzer Gray was even chipped or not. That red chip that's actually on that other page, it's actually right up in this section and you literally can't see it against the, the Panzer Gray and the red because the value of those two colors are really similar in a black and white conversation. And if it's just a quick wartime photo, it's almost, it's almost impossible. So what you do, how you do this, Captain Oblivious, to answer your question, how you do this, the best trick is to first study the subject. What is its color base? Is it Panzer Gray? Is it Olive Drab? Whatever your subject is, is it 4BO? Is it, is it, is it SCC-15 for Brits? All that stuff, study it. Know what it is at its core to become an expert at a little bit. Now you don't have to be like the, the superstar expert, but just when you're working on the project, what I do is I study it really hard about it first. If I'm gonna do a serious model, like we're just fucking around. I'm, let me mix paint while I talk. I get super distracted. Hello from Chile, thank you, Daniel. Okay, so we're gonna, let's go back on camera. I want a little bit more of a lighter shade. So this is the Reseda Green. Three, four, that's a nice even number. So study your subject, study what it was painted in so you know. You know it's a red primer base. Almost most European military products in the 30s, 40s, 50s, etc., were red primer based. Then the base color, if it's a Dunkel Gelb plus the two other colors, or if it's a Panzer Gray. So you have your base spectrum. Work within that because you know if you're gonna chip through Panzer Gray, you're gonna hit red primer first. But in black and white photos, they really show up. All of, all of Drab US, I, I still don't 100% know for sure, but I think that the Americans were using a, a gray um, baked on enamel primer, if, if, I do, if I do recall my, and I do have some Sherman stuff coming up too. I am getting ready to do a new Allied book, Allied Tank book. So when you open the mission models paints in the, in the beginning, uh, they have these little uh, sealers for, tr for shipment to keep it from leaking. The one thing with a plastic bottle, uh, you know, in an ideal world, you probably really, really like to use glass for your paint, uh, but this is a cost thing. It's expensive to, to do this kind of stuff. Uh, but anyway, let me just, I put the cap back on. Okay, so this is this is the olive green, olive green for us uh, English speakers. Two, three, so that's seven drops. Let's go 50-50. Okay, so we got eight. Okay. 
So that's, that's how you handle the color conversation with black and white is really study what the base stuff is in. Obviously for World War II, it's gonna be the bigger challenge, but also there's so many people out there that can help. So also don't be shy and say, hey guys, post that photo. I found this on eBay or this whatever. And if it's a copyright thing, just put like, hey, this is for discussion. Uh, what do you guys think this color scheme is? And you'll open up a big can of worms sometimes, that's fine. But then you just make your decision based off the information come back. Usually it's pretty straight up. Um, like I said, the red's probably gonna be the one that's gonna, red and greens are gonna trip you up. Just think the reds kind of go black and dark. So the darker secondary color is almost always the red color. And the slightly lighter tone on a three tone in particular is gonna usually be the green. Then the, obviously the dunkel gum is a pretty easy one to see. That's usually how I handle that. Yeah, so. Yeah, greets down to Chile and all, all my South American friends. Okay, so we have eight drops of paint in there, right? See, I didn't forget. <laughs> okay, let's spin this over. So I got the thinner bottle out now. Let's go vertical. So like I said, what happens when you when you put these bottles vertical, the vacuum seals that it won't drip out, which is kind of almost counterintuitive. You're like, what? Okay, so we got, let's put in three. One, two, three. Okay, a little bit, it's a little hotter. I got a thermometer on the wall. It says 74 Fahrenheit. It's actually not a bad day. Uh, it's getting a little bit hot and dry in here. It's summertime, so I go just a hair on the thinner side. Okay, where's my little mixer brush? Which one was my mixer brush? It was this one. Yeah, I'm getting myself confused. Oh, here it is. No, it's fine. Okay, so we're... It's a nice little shade of green. There it goes. So let's do that again. I'll show you guys. So in the old days, what we used to say is that, you know, kind of like, like milk. See how that just kind of runs down? That's good for me. I don't like it super runny runny. I, I have backed off that a little bit in the past where, and the reason is your opacity, you struggle a little bit more with, with, the, with the thin. Now, uh, what did I do here? Oh, I dropped some thinner on that one. Oops. I messed up, my friends. It's okay. If I don't mess with this too much, let's try this quick. That's what I get for not paying attention. Um, what was I saying? I forget what I was. Oh, uh, thinning ratios. So I'm going um, Le Tour de France. Tour de France. I love the Tour. Dude, if you guys are not watching the Tour de France this year, holy cow. And I haven't watched today's. Don't say anything. Uh, I watched up to the Alps yesterday. Fantastic race this year. So far. It might blow wide open right now because the dude leading is, um, he's amazing. Okay, sorry. I dropped a drop of thinner on that one wheel. No biggie. Uh, let me see which one here is my clean thinner. This guy. So yeah, I, I go about, with mission models in particular, warm weather, about a 30% thinning ratio. Um, slightly more opaque layers. Now that's a fine-tuned experience airbrusher telling you that. So you're gonna have to kind of learn that a little bit. And the reason I'm saying that is, is that um, I have fought over time, and this is more my own process is sometimes building up thin, thin, really thin layers for hairspray chipping and stuff like that. You, you trip kind of an opacity switch where it becomes a struggle to chip. And so I'm trying to get a little bit less paint down in a slightly more opaque manner. Hopefully that makes sense. A little bit more opaque layers, still thin, just not translucent as much. So it's a little bit tidbit. I, I struggled with that, especially the, the the latex paints, the Vallejo life colors, you, you'd have to be a little bit cautious with that in that process of hairspray. With the, and I do that in Tank R3 where I talk about my struggles with that because the vinyl latex, how that dries as a, as a chemical, it has a different type of property. So anyway, where's my little, there it is. Okay, so I've got the airbrush loaded with the green. A little test spray. Do, 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 do. It's money. Okay, so to do this while I hold this down here. I'll get to your question. I saw your question there, buddy. VS in the hold on one second. Oh, thank you, Rick. Yeah, it's I've been loving that the extended highlights from NBC. Okay, so as you recall, we measured that out. We got our little uh Thank you. 
Now I'm going green over uh, the dark gray. So that dark gray will give it a little bit of a, of a darker tint, which is what I actually kind of didn't want. So if I was a little bit more careful, I'd probably put down a little bit of a lighter shade first. So I'm gonna have to build this up a little bit. So if you hear that secondary pulse, what I just did there, I sprayed the color and then I dried it. Just the air, so if you, so, whoops, sorry. So if you just push down, you're just getting air. Beauty of, a t of, of the of the um, the two, <laughs> I just forgot what it's called. Um, but the airbrush, what is it called? <laughs> Not two-step, what is that? Oh my gosh, the brain just dropped off. Dual action, oh my gosh, sorry. Single action, dual action, dual action airbrush. Air, pull back for paint, much more control. So anyway, there you go. There's the green down. Actually, let's do this. Okay, so you've got your green. So say that happens. I'm not super happy with that color as a model builder, like just me being like, dude, that's a little dark for me. Take your base color. In this case, it's the Dunkel Gout, which I made up yesterday, and I'll just quickly reference this, um, of these two shades. This is your Late War Dunkel Gout, the Mission Models 19, and then the Eiffen, the Eiffenbein, the interior color. It's a great lightener. I like to use this to lighten it. In, in the Tamiya conversation, XF60, Dunkelgeld, lighten that with XF55 deck tan if you're a Tamiya user. Genius color setup, uh, one of my favorites. But let's put a drop or two of Eiffenbein into the green. That's too dark for my palette. I want it lighter, because it's gonna look really dark against that thing. So let's put some Eiffenbein, two, three, four drops of that in there. And what I like to do, if I'm gonna lighten a color, especially a green, uh, and this goes for all the draft too. Uh, use a tan or a yellow or something not white. White makes things look pasty. So if you're gonna lighten a color, and in this case, because it's, it's the whole German armor covers conversation, the light Dunkelgelb shades are a great lightener for the greens. And since it's a base color in the green, the harmony starts to tighten up. And that's a little trick. When we talk about filters and, and color balance and color harmony, if you're gonna lighten your dark shades, use your base color, like if it's, there's a light Dunkelgelb or a light tan or it's a NATO color, you know, use some of the other colors in those. Well, NATO you can't because that's they're all three are super dark. Um, but the German three-tone World War II, I use the Dunkelgelb to lighten the red and the green when I spray my camo now. Uh, and you almost kind of skip the filter step. But anyway. Uh, hey Pablo, how are you? Welcome. Um, yep, dual act. Thank you, dual act. The brain just went, Ugh. I was saying like, like I was thinking like two-step airbrush, but no, double action. Air first and then dry. So what you heard me was dry that. Let me add some thinner. Just try not to get the thinner else. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit. One, two, oops, one and three, no big deal. A little bit over thin, more than I wanted to. It's not the end of the world. Okay, there we go. So see that, that, that shade there is a little bit, it's a little bit better. So what I need to do though, this is, this is get rid of a color, dump it on the paper towel. Okay, until you hear the paint come out. Get some back in there. Trying to stand on camera. Okay, there we go, a little bit of lighter green. This is my first time airbrushing on camera in a while, so I'll improve my uh, my processes moving forward. I was more concerned about the airbrushes than I was anything else. So, okay. so let's set this back up. And no, this is not how I normally do stuff. So there's a little bit of I'm just hustling. And I'm just kind of dusting that on. I don't want to get too thick, too heavy. Leaving a little bit of that darker shade in there. Okay, that's a little bit more of a pop. There you go, that's a little better. So let's pull this dude over. Oh, I was gonna do a Dunkel Gub one. Okay, let's do another color switch. I'll be quick. I'll catch up on questions in a second. Yeah, Portland Stone's another great color. Um, I, like I've said before in stream, I don't get super hung up on color names. You know, use what works, what works. Right. 
So I'm just emptying the color out of the brush right now. I'm doing a fast color switch. Get some thinner in here. Um, so yeah, definitely when you get comfortable with colors, definitely. Hola, Miguel, what's up? Welcome, welcome. Do a quick, quick down and dirty color shift. Okay, Tion, hello my friend, Terre Blanche. Uh, hairspray chipping with Tamiya Thin with Mr. Hobby self-loving thinner. Will will the bond be too strong to chip? It'll chip. It'll chip. It won't. It won't chip for a long time. Um, in the conversation of hairspray chipping, and we will have a bunch of those. I promise you. Uh, I don't have a lot of airbrush cleaning set up right now. That's another thing I didn't really think through a lot. I'll, I'll be better with this a little bit. I'm doing this a little down and dirty. So don't think this is normal. Just using my pinky to get that gunk out of there. We're going we're gonna to do some Dunkle Gelb. So there'll be a slight green left in that. Let me show you how I pull the needle real quick. If you know how to pull the needle out real quick without damage, this is it's a, it's a non-stressful thing. Because I know it's a sharp tip and you don't want to either poke yourself or bend it. Okay, so I got most of the green out of there. You get a Q-tip here. So what I do is I do with a Q-tip. Let's just get this out of here. Um, what do we got? Okay, so let me go back to Tion's question on the hairspray. Yes, so you have a, a hierarchy of thinners. Let's start with waters or base zero to like three in terms of grip level, strength level. You're gonna get better chips with, with a type of paint like a Tamiya or a Gunzi in that conversation. As you move up to the alcohol thinners, it's gonna be a little bit stronger bond. The chipping's gonna be a little bit more resistant. Now you can use this if you test this out to see how your chips go to your advantage. So you can play with the thinner ratios of strength thinners as you go up the thinner scale. And then obviously the, the thinners, um, the, the lacquer thinners as you go up in the lacquer conversation, that obviously that bond is gonna, gonna cure fast, strong, stronger bond. That's why it's used, it sprays, that whole thing. The problem with that is it just, well, I guess it's not a problem. It's going to depend on your subject. It's going to depend on what you're trying to do, Tion. Is that a blanket statement of, uh, no, I wouldn't use to me a leveling thinner with hairspray. No, I, I just wouldn't do it. It's just, you're just going to fight it. It's like spraying a humbrel for hairspray chipping. You're going to fight the enamel curing process. You can do it and learn it. You can be an expert at it, no big deal. But that's kind of one of those things where I try to baseline that down a little bit. And you can also do like a 50% water, 50% lacquer thinner as you're thinner, as you're thinner for the hairspray paint version. So yes, the answer is yes, but you can also use it to your advantage if you know how it all works. Okay. Let me, let me clean this out one last time and then we'll pull the, pull the needle out real quick. Okay, so let me zoom out here real quick. Okay, so just pop out the needle here. What I like to do sometimes, about, usually when a color shift like this, is I'll pull the handle off, loosen that up. That's the grippy nut. See, I can feel the needle was stuck in there a little bit. So pull this out and you can see here, let's get this one back in. Let's see if we can get this to focus. A little bit. So yeah, it's, it's covered in green. Basically the needle's dirty. So since I've got airbrush thinner down there, just wipe this off. This is a down and dirty being quick um, I'm in the middle of airbrushing a lot. So what I do is the airbrush has been, the needle's been wiped off relatively clean. I use a little bit of, now there's a little bit of gunk on that. Okay, hold on. Let me do a little bit better. So I'm just rolling that, rolling it, pulling it backwards. There it goes. Yep. There's a little bit of gunk left on that. So roll it, pull it backwards. Oops, out of focus. Sorry. Yeah, just roll that between your fingers gently. My fingers underneath, and I'm pulling that back, and that just wipes that tip off real quick. A little bit of wipe it through the, the lips to kind of, so, so, hold on. This is where I need a buddy. Yeah, okay, here we go. Come on, focus. Hold my hands right there, and there we go. Sorry, guys. Okay, so use your finger to support the tip, and then lay the finger against the base, and then lay that tip, if I can put my, and then slide it in. And then I just twist it as it goes back in, you'll feel it. That's a super gentle. And then roll your fingers, lock that down. Boom, done. Okay, that's usually what I do if I'm in, if I'm, if I'm working hard uh, and I need to just a quick clean, I'm not stripping anything down. 
um, but I need to get that tip cleaned out of there. And what the reason I do that versus versus cleaning the, the tip as much sometimes, uh, in the dry weather like this, I already know I'm fighting the weather. So you're gonna be fighting tip dry. It's, an, it's a water-based acrylic. This is a pretty resistive system. It will still tip dry. Almost all paints will still tip dry. But what, what you can do then is with the wet brush with thinner, in between your, your spraying sessions, if you, you start hearing that thing start to spit, clean the tip off with a wet brush. Uh, and then if you're having a real bad time, pull the needle real quick and then do it up. But you can hear it. Yep, we're good, we're money. Okay, so let's make up a quick dunkel gelb. Get a fresh cup. Put three drops of that. And put three drops of this guy. Oops, we're going too, sorry. One, two, three. Okay, so that's, again, that's the, uh, the Eifenbein. That's just a lightener tone. And then I have the late war dunkel gelb here. And this, to me, this color out of the bottle is a little bit on the flesh tone side for me, for my personal taste. So I use a little bit of a, like a, like a paler white, yellowy color, tan color. Portland Stone was another good call. If, if you have that, it doesn't matter the paint brand, but just, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so we're gonna do it. a little bit thinner than last time. So what I like to do is, and you'll see this a lot, you see guys do this a lot. Just that, that's that's kind of from experience what you're looking for. Like I said, this, is, this isn't this is a 50-50 thin, it's kind of a 30% thinner with, with the mission models. I find that to be a little bit on point. They're, they're good with their instructions. They go by drop count, I just go by 30%, a third, you know. So I try to drop in like even numbers just because my brain handles the math better. Okay, airbrush. Let me get one more fresh thing of paper towel. Okay. Hold that in half. Okay, let's get these guys up over here. That guy's fine. All right, reset my demo. Everybody good? Uh, are you using for Tamiya? Carol's asking, what's thinner using for Tamiya colors? Uh, depends on your process, but. Um, Lacquer thinner, the yellow cap, uh, guys using Mr. Gunzi, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, uh, is the best of the best. It works good uh, for spraying. Um, so VS is, by the way, I'm the only one that always what tries to keep my airbrush as clean as possible. It still ends up being dirty. Yeah, no, this is a mess. This is this is demo mess. This is all the mess of everything, which is totally cool because it's good for you guys to see that. Uh, it really feels like one of the favorites. Magically, <laughs> thank you, TK. That's awesome, man. Um, but yeah, I, I do want you to understand that, that first off, I got a shit ton of equipment in front of me. I'm trying to get familiar with it. But the core processes, the, the thinning, everything you're seeing up live, unedited. Anybody can do this. So I'm using my circle template. Hold on, let me. So this is light thin coats, but you can see that going down. Oh, let me, sorry, let me zoom back in a little tighter for you guys. I'm slowing down a little bit to be a little bit more precise and careful. And I'm angling into the corner of that of that edge of that wheel. That's what you're. That's actually what you're not seeing me do. But that's what, how I'm doing this. I'm just building up that color gently. And when I do my pass with the airbrush, I'm actually starting off the wheel and then moving across the wheel and then pulling off. Now you could spray continuously if you want. I did a little bit, just be a little bit more experienced with that because you can overdo it quickly. And I just want to maintain that there's a little bit of a, like I know there's a darker shade. I'm actually going to use that here in a second because we're going to show you a little mission models love 
Um, not to be sponsored, and I'm not sponsored by the way, not at all. I'm just literally friends. Um, okay. Oops. Boom. Boom and done. Okay, let me let me actually put some get this paint out of here. Because if I don't, I'm gonna be spending the rest of my fourth of July cleaning airbrushes. That's gonna be all your fault. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, we're, we're going a little bit. We're, yeah, so I'm gonna go probably two and a half to three hours. We got about another 20, 30 minutes if you guys are looking to hang around. VS models, anybody can do this. It is my goal, brother. We'll get you, we'll get you. Uh, and if I'm missing questions, uh, Larry, how are you? Good to see you, I know the name. Uh, I haven't used Mission Models Flow Improver. Are you talking to Polly? You're talking Polly, I think you're talking Polly. Okay, I think that's what it is. Yeah, don't, okay, Carol, everybody else listening, and I'm guilty, oh my gosh. Don't be lazy cleaning your tools, especially the airbrush. I'm just trying to get this paint out of here for now, and I'm gonna do a good 20 minute cleaning after I'm done, and look at that juicy towel on screen, that's so fun. This is the least sexy th uh, stream today. We are not going for looks, right? I mean, you got my mug. Hopefully that's enough for you guys. Okay, so I'm using a just Q-tip swirling around the cup, getting the base. I'm just trying to get the bulk of the paint out of here so I can move on and not worry that the, the airbrush is going to clog up on me and dry. But also, because it's all one system, like I was telling you in the beginning, it's all mission models. I know in 20 minutes, run some thinner through this, clean it up, it's no big deal. And I don't have to resort to heavy duty cleaners, which I think is probably like a mental thing for many people where you're like, oh shit, I got to push my lacquer thinner through, an old, through old paint through the brush and try to clean it out. That's when you start having problems. Take that part to heart as well. Keep your solvents in your solvent brushes. Just keep working this with, with, with the, the water and mission model. You'll run some water and clean it all through. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess. But it's done. It's done enough that I can move on and, and keep, uh, keep doing this. Okay. So what happens here? Do I have my water? And we'll definitely do a lot more airbrushing. I, I went a little bit uh, heavy handed talking today. Um, geez, God, let's see. I keep all 9% on our temp, super green, wash out my brush. Yeah. Um, so, Larry, I think you're talking about, yeah, Polly. Okay, you are talking about. So, Polly is new to the hobby in the sense of uh, what it's for, or where it came from. Actually, I need a little water, don't I? I'll try a cup. Pour some water. I'm gonna a little tap water in a cup here. Polyurethane, polyurethane additive. Uh, what that does, because it's not something I use a lot, uh, just because I do a lot of wear and tear in the paint, and the poly will strengthen the paint. It takes the mission, and I said this wrong in the beginning years ago, and I've been corrected by the company about that. And I asked about that too, because I wanted to be clear about how it works, because I was new to it too. Um, the polyurethane additive in the mission models conversation is it does a couple things. It is a flow enhancer. It does improve the airflow of the airbrushing, which is good for cars and planes in particular. Uh, if you need a smoother, it's a leveler. It self levels the paint even better than the, the actual leveling qualities, but it's a matte paint. The, the base paint is matte. So by adding the poly to it and by leveling out smoother, it turns it into a satin. And if you guys, a basic rundown matte on the molecular level, the little paint particles are all jimmied up. And then as you go satin, they smooth out. And then as you go gloss, that's how you get a gloss coat. It's because the surface is super smooth. Matte is, is on the tiny level, really, really rough, diffusing all the light, which gives it its matte quality. The poly plays you into like a satin with a matte paint. So it kind of moves you up that spectrum. And you'll see it. If you paint matte mission models raw like this, it's, it's you know, that's dead matte. And then you add the poly, it'll get a little bit more satiny. So, that's one thing. The other thing is it does turn it into a polyurethane finish, which is extremely durable. Gunpla guys, you should be kicking off right now. We'll get in that conversation. That happens to strengthen the paint. Um, that's most of its qualities. Flow enhancer, leveling, and strength. Uh, that's usually what it's used for. That Again, that's gonna be super useful for aircraft guys in particular for a certain type of civilian finish or a less weathered military finish. Um, and then in the, in the car side of it, it, it does a lot of good stuff for truck modeling, car modeling, race cars. 
It's not so much for the armor as much as maybe you would think, and you don't have to feel obligated to get into it because we do so much wear and tear on this. Um, but that's hopefully kind of gets you. Yeah, so you guys are talking costs. Yeah, you guys chat amongst it, no problem. Yeah, and again, resources, Amazon, whatever works for you guys. I use eBay a lot too. I do buy most of my stuff. I don't I don't get a lot of stuff handed to me. Um, and I did a lot of graphic design work for mission models back in the day. So the, some of the paints I got, but that was also compensation for me because it wasn't freebies. I did work, <laughs> pain in the ass they are. Um, yeah, you guys are talking costs. Um, so Tion in, in South Africa, uh, we ship to South Africa. You're welcome to order through the RSP website. Links in the description below, all that good stuff. Like, yeah, like, subscribe, the whole effing thing. Dude, it blew up. I was like 800 subscribers. I woke up to 1.4K, so 1,400, almost doubled overnight. So awesome. Blow this up. Uh, let's have a few, yeah. Yeah, you guys have to run, if you have to go, whatever is going on, if you have for purchasing, for barbecues, whatever you gotta do. So anyway. Okay, the fun part today. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I've got, I'm pulling in here um, an older rig. This is actually one of my hairspray brushes. And it, so Mission Models, one of the other qualities is they have what they call, uh, and it comes from the type of chemical being an organic pigment, water-based system, an erasability factor. And some of you bumped heads with this, and I've bumped heads with it too, especially with hairspray. Uh, and I'll try to condense this into, into a clear, conversation uh the erasability factors happens for about we'll call it half a day but really for 24 hours more or less there's there's a slow cure to mission models on the long term over the first 24 hours it'll it'll kick off and the like it's already dry and i'm touching the rubber and everything else but it, it's already pretty much set what you can do now though with this without doing hair there's no hairspray of course but you can get a very very similar effect Kind of similar to the to the, the Windex removal technique a little bit. So let me let me get this going here. So I've got a little cup of water there. Let's get the brush wet. Okay, on the paper towel, we're gonna unload that. So yeah, it's it's damp, but it's not it's not super moist. Let me get that thing out of the way. Let me pick this guy up here. Go back over here. I need my eyeballs. Sorry. Okay. So this is this is a part of the erasability factor. So I'm starting to rub that paint off a little bit. Oops, I'm hitting the camera again. So what you can do, let's get a little bit more wet down on this guy. So right now, what I'm trying to do is, I don't want to chip this crazy. I'm not trying to, but road wheels get messed up. I'm just trying to get a little bit of wear and tear going. See that right there on that lip. And my brush stroke here really slow. Slow down. So it looks like I'm just jimming it, but, but I'm actually coming in. Uh, Right to left. <laughs> oh, I'm losing it. Can't even think. Right to left. Just really slow. It looks quick on camera. But just putting a little bit of wear and tear. You see that right there? Just a little bit of scuff and scruff. So it kind of falls in between kind of a hairspray a little bit. But that erasability factor. And you see how much little water's on that? I'm not getting too crazy. So it's just kind of gently coming off a little bit. Now you can, like I said, you can use this to your advantage because of uh, I'm doing patina, I'm doing wear and tear to the paint. Um, I'm looking at the microphone, you guys are over here. But that's kind of one of those things where there's, that's a little trick to that. There, when you, when you, there we go. You can just kind of see that. You see that little discoloration? That kind of subtlety in, in how we've kind of rolled around. And actually, it was a benefit for me to have the darker green first layer and then I went a little bit lighter because you're getting kind of that darker green coming through and it's not super dissimilar to the lacquer thinner uh, dry brushing technique I was doing in tank art 2 and in tank art 1 as well it's the same concept principle of you just taking that top you're just kissing it off 
excuse me, got the hiccups. But that's kind of one of those things where that's because of the way this paint operates. If you use it this way, let's do the yellow one. And you don't need to go crazy, but I just want to show you guys that real quick because it is a, it is part of, and we'll get into this more and more as we keep going. Okay, so same thing. What I'm doing here is get a little water. And I tend to brush in the direction of, of either travel or how things are gonna move. You know, so, so as this thing spins around, you can see how the top of these bolts here are just starting to get a little, uh, come off a little bit. And I'm just, I'm moving. Oops, here it is. So you see the brush? So imagine in my fingers is a surface. This is just to show you. I'm moving it across like that. So the side of the bristles are kind of acting like sandpaper on the top. See those, see those bolts right there? So you see the sheen, it's not running wet, none of that, it's just a little bit moist. Just kind of come in here. And my pressure is, it's like a tickle. Like I said, tickle's probably the best word I can come up with. There's almost no force to this. And I've got a little bit of fuzz in there. I'm trying to get that up. But you can see how those bolts right there. So this happens pretty quick, especially with the light and the dark like this. So this is, some of you guys mentioned this. The bleeding you see the bleeding over the over the rubber let me clean my brush when you see that come in here and you can knock that down a little bit now I'm gonna add dust to that road wheel anyway so I'm not super worried about that so my this is my brush stroke center out center out rotate the wheel center out and anytime you cut down like right here so I've cut some rubber down to the primer you can just hand paint that and touch it up. And that's normal. When you do wear and tear reductive techniques, you're gonna get that off into regardless of the paint brand, type of thing, whatever you're doing, you're gonna get in those problems. Don't panic, it's okay. Uh, when we get back to the point where we put this on the model, we can come back in with a little, you know, you're gonna do some touch up work because some of the sharp, this is a really sharp edge rubber. That's that's a hard plastic sharp edge. So it's gonna, it's gonna wear off really, really fast. And, and, and you can see, dude, Guys, girls, ladies, boys and girls, whatever. Here, I'm just trying to scrub kind of in that, kind of like the green one a little bit. So we got a little chip going there, nice. And you will, the more, the more you go, you can really kind of start to chip this out pretty good. But I just want a little discoloration. I just want a little bit. And then for armor guys, that's a, that's a, that's another way to get a little bit of a, kind of appreciate post shade type of thing in a, in a grittier way with that. You can see on screen how that kind of that, that darker area is kind of the, the, I've rubbed just gently. It's kind of a sandpaper effect. It's hard to describe it. And I hope I'm kind of coming across accurately. Um, but the, the erasability factor, the mission models paints that kind of, uh, because the pigments are so fine, it lets you really get You're, I'm getting some really nice kind of out in those bolts on the outer edge here. I don't want to go crazy. I just want a little bit. Kind of a new road wheel. Kind of been in the field for a little while. Um, yeah, so Mike's asking, would this work with Tamiya Paints using lacquer thinner? So when you do that, and I should demo that. I should actually do some of those demos for that. And we'll all thank you and remind me in the future too. Um, so... Actually, this might be the actual brush from the book for that lacquer thinner stuff. I think it's, I've used it for a couple years now. Um, really get it dry. So, so pretending, pretending this is lacquer thinner, this little thing here. You're gonna, you're gonna get in there, get out of there, get on the paper towel, get all that lacquer thinner out of that brush. Okay, see how, now pretending it's, see how dry that is right there? Now you go to your skin, you're gonna check and rub. You want almost no lacquer thinner coming off on your finger in that process, what you're asking about. Um, and the reason is it's so powerful, it's super powerful. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you're just gonna wanna, you're just gonna wanna kiss it. And, and when the moment you see the discoloration happening, move, move along, move along. You can always come back, but get some going, move along, get some going, move along. Because lacquer thinner will just chew through stuff. If you have just a, t a smidge, 
Is that English word transfer? Just a tiny, tiny amount of lacquer thinner will chew through paint immediately. So just be really careful with it. The drier the brush is, now what you will see is the bristles start to gather the paint because it's, pull, it's pulling the paint off. So it'll go into the brush. So what you'll have to do is reset the brush every few minutes. And that's kind of the challenge is, is resetting the thinner, dry it off again, reset it, and try to be consistent with that. That is a little bit more of a challenge, but yeah. So that's kind of, hopefully they get you. But yeah, same basic principle. Uh, same thing with any kind of uh, Vallejo thinner, the airbrush thinner uh, that I did on the Tiger. Same thing, it, it works all in the same principles. Being really careful with how much is liquid is on that for those processes, that's the, the key, the key to success. And it is a little bit of a less or more conversation in that whole thing, but anyway. Hopefully that kind of, I just want to show you guys that. So let's pull the Hetzer back over. Give him a little prop. Get this set up here. Let's see where I want to put them. Let's put these over here. Put these two road wheels in the back. Okay. Let me get this. Hold on a sec. So hopefully that kind of helps. Yeah, it's, it's a nice little, just want to show you guys that it's, it's a really nice little um, perk, if you will. It's a bonus. Okay. Let's zoom out just a, a little bit here. Yeah. That way you can see that. Pull this guy back here. Okay, I'm just set up for a little bit of oils again. And so... We could, we could go right into the oil paint work too, because it's water based acrylics and stuff's already you know, pretty dry. Let me get some questions going here, but yeah. I hope you guys are, the, some of this stuff is, we're, we're actually doing some pretty important stuff, even though we're, we're going a little bit long here. We're pushing almost three. Uh, let's see here, we'll go back up here. Okay, so, um, yeah, you guys are doing good. I know there's a bunch of soccer stuff going down too, plus Tour de France, plus Formula One. I can't say anything, I'm not allowed to. Um, G uses a polyurethane additive that does produce nice finish, but is also, yeah, it, it's the, le the the flow enhancer retarding process for tip drying and all that. It does, it is useful for that. Again, I don't use it a ton simply because it goes into the satin conversation of the, of the finish. I tend to like most of my military stuff and my weathering stuff from a mat. So I, I don't use the poly as much. Plus it's, you know, it's not, in a, it's not in a bad way, but because of its strength qualities, it will alter the hairspray conversation a little bit. So you have to be just kind of fine tuned to what's going on and learn about its qualities and everything. So, and things will do that. Chemicals will come around and they'll change the conversation and that's okay. You just have to kind of learn what's, what's up with what. Um, okay. So yeah, so we, yeah, we just have, you know, just trying to get caught up on some questions. Yep. Um, so you'll have to thin the paint with a few more drops to rethin it. Yeah, I, yeah, I tend to, I haven't played with missions thin with water too much. I found that their uh, resistive qualities with their own thinner was good enough for me. The reason I use water with Tamiya was because it was the least resistive because the paint starts getting really resistive the higher up that, the back to that other conversation with lacquer thinner. So I found so far, it does most of what I need to do with the thinner, uh, but yeah, water does work too. Um, I usually don't add the water to it personally. What you see me doing here also, by the way, to repeat, because I know I've said this before, if you're not seeing me doing something, then I don't do it. Straight up, keep it that simple. Uh, Ronaldo's not doing anything funny. The mixing, you, you basically saw what I was doing. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, which is good, because that relates to what's in the book. So you also know that when I'm doing this stuff, that conversation, you know that's what's happening. And I want to get that across to you guys. So you don't think there's not, I'm not doing, I'm not leaving something out. Oh, uh, let's see, Larry Paul, you guys still talking? Let's see here, I see some, I'm guessing that's soccer you guys are chatting about? The Worlds, maybe? Um, yeah, so Cod T, you, you, you uh, welcome, and then um, I think there's a lot of power here, what I just showed you guys with that weathering. Uh, it goes into the conversation of hairspray, it goes in the conversation of like that Windex removal process, it goes into all those conversations that you can also use it this way. So that's another little tool in the, in the toolbox. Uh, Snickles44, what's going on? Um, yeah, bud, so if you're just coming in right now, uh, we did some mission models painting, some airbrushing, and I'm just showing you some of the, uh, dis not, I don't want to say distemper, but it kind of is a little bit, but we're showing you some patina, some early kind of just little deal. Um, yeah, I don't know if we'll, Martin, Martin's halfway around the world. He's, poor, poor boy's got a broken leg, so I don't know how soon. But we are going to do a podcast, yes. We're going to be chatting soon. Martin and I actually don't know each other in person. Adam and I, we go pretty far back now, even though we haven't seen each other in a while. So 
Uh, and Martin kind of came in from Adam's point of view on scale modeling. So his Martin Red Kovac early days was kind of a younger Adam Wilder, if you will, and kind of learning. So we do all three kind of do things a little bit differently. Those two kind of do it more similar to what they do. And then I kind of have, you know, my versions over here. So it'll be an interesting conversation when we get to it. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing is uh, back to what I was showing you there, Snickles, uh, but is just uh, using a little bit of water on a brush and you can, there's an erasability factor to the paint in the first like half day to a day that you can do these kinds of things with. So if you're working like this, a great comment, like if you're doing road wheels on a tank, whatever, uh, you know, get your paint your one side and then do this and then go back and paint the other side and then do this. And this gets you some early wear and tear. I mean, you can see, dude, I just, it's gold right there. I don't need to do much more other than just get it dirty now. Okay, so let's switch some brushes. Segway. <laughs> yeah, let me get over here. A couple brushes. So my oil palette's off camera, I apologize, but because I'm on the on this little spinner and it's taped to the bench, I'm just gonna leave it there, but we can also, you know, just so you can see where it's at. It's this guy right here. And then my, my thinner for that's right there. Get this out of the way. So I have a uh, odorless thinner. This is AK's brand. And then I've got my palette of oil paints here. And I've got uh, some greens and yellows, some sand and dust colors, uh, yellow and orange to lighten tone, dark browns, rust, and, and my blacks on the side. So what I did last time was I put all the dark colors together, which I normally do, but I forgot I had added black. But when they kind of go to this, the colors are so similar when you're being quick. That's burnt umber, that's raw umber, sorry. Raw umber and black on the palette look really, really similar. So I pulled the black over here so I know that that's black and you can see how juicy that goes. So that's what I did. Simple color palette relates to the base model. That's all you do. Whatever you're painting in, you're gonna have some colors on the, that's all you have to do. Keep it that simple. Okay. So let's go, because the green's gonna be beautiful for this. Let's go a little bit light to dark. These brushes over here. Need some blending brushes. Okay, we got that. Okay. Okay. Put my eyeballs on. Okay, so I'm getting thinner on the brush, wet my brush, and then coming into the to the tan colors over here off camera a little bit. down some dust color first. Okay. And the road was not glued to the, to the hub, so it is a little floppy loose. Focus it on my brushwork, center out. So that's just an early dust layer onto the green. Let's put a little of a... So what I'm basically doing is, is, is just a simple wash. Not even a pin wash, this is a pretty general wash. And I'm being a little sloppy because it's a road wheel. The reason I left it loose, so I can spin out of that. If you glue these down, then you're fighting you're fighting that covers there of the, of the idler. Depending on how you how you build this out, I tend to leave the dry sprockets and idlers loose. In the case of the Tamiya one, there's a poly cap, so I don't have to worry about it. And then if you have an adjustable idler arm on the back or the front, wherever it is, keep that loose as well when you mount the tracks. And then when you mount the tracks, you can then tighten everything up. Pro tip. So let's pull in a little bit of a darker brown here. I'm pulling in a little bit of a darker brown shade, a little mixing in with the tan. This is the stuff I love. This is really fun. Okay, I don't have enough oil down. It's it's there's so much thinner on the surface. So I'm just adding, this is sloppy on purpose. Don't sweat it. I've added a little more thinner to the brush. I 
Everything's still wet. I haven't even dried anything yet. Clean brush, clean some stuff up a little bit. Just kind of fine tuning these guys will soften that up a little bit. Because you can see it's a little bit of a hard edge right there. This is just a clean brush and thinner. And the surface is still a little wet from the light dust color. So this is kind of my initial getting it dirty a little bit. Okay, let's hit this with a hairdryer. It's at a good spot. So I have to be a little bit careful with this. So I'm gonna pull the hairdryer up real close, low heat. Okay, I'm gonna kind of protect this with my hand. So we've got that probably 90, 95% dry. I mean, you can see how much progress we made in a really quick amount of time. Okay, I've got too, I had too much thinner in there. That was my mistake. I should always touch the paper towel first. That's okay. So see how, see how look right here on the, on the tire, that all that wash, how that dries out? Now watch this. This is just with the thinner. And I'll get to your comments in a sec, guys. I'm assuming there's, or you're just really quiet and focused because this is, this is money stuff right here. I'm not being super precise. I want a little bit of kind of, and it does show a little more contrast on camera. I will say that much, but that's okay. It's pretty close, pretty accurate. By, by rolling in the, sh the stroke direction, the way this dries, it, it kind of pre-dries in the right process for you. And that's, that's the, what is that, my cue? Is that my ride, is my ride here? Can you guys hear that horn? Somebody's going nuts out there. Okay. It is the 4th of July. All right. Okay, so this is kind of the, the first layer there. Soften. So what happens is, that, is the, the contact patch of the road wheel gets a little bit extra oil as you just come back in. So now I'm reverse pulling this in and see how that right up in here. See how those kind of refine those streaks right in there by, by coming back the opposite direction. So I'm pulling from top down. So that gives you that realistically slightly clean rubber tire edge. And then it gives you that realistic dust that sp that's, that splays out as the wheel spins uh, conversation. And see over here, I didn't really touch this. It's kind of a diffused dirt. So I'm coming, I'm actually coming from the edge in, edge in really fast. That's why you're seeing that moves. And this just kind of, it's a bit, it's basically dry brushing with a clean thinner brush. Rotating that through. And see, this is a little bit streak happy for me. Let's soften some of this up. And this is just basically dry brushing with the thinner on the brush. So it's, it's pretty much, you can see that, how dry that is. This is how controllable the oil paints are. This is why it's such a powerful product. Because I can have that palette down and truth be told is I can, I can prep this for the whole model and go through this whole thing. And this is, if I'm talking about in sections, road wheels are beautiful because of their own section. It makes it super easy. But you can see how quickly we went from paint, we rubbed some little bit of paint, uh, some of it off to get a little bit of a chipping effect going a little bit. And you can see how you kind of lose it a little bit anyway. Um, and this gives you a little bit of dust in here. We got a little bit of dirt and grime going. Now let's do a little bit and just do the darker layer of the oil and the grease and the grime section. And you can see with some good tunes and everything else, I hope this is all going through. <laughs> I haven't looked up at all. Okay, 
is 0 0.9 and it does cover the yellow uh it, it vs yeah i mean it just you know whatever dude like don't don't sweat that like if it's if that color that color but you're gonna want the dust on the rubber so putting that down will shift that yellow slightly and you do see it you do see the results of of what happens through the through the dust techniques and stuff like that um and, and you and just to be just to be guys these road wheels right here the same road wheels literally no, uh, this is a dragon kit. Uh, same vehicle, but it's just literally what I did, and it's all in the book, the whole thing. This is this is how quick it goes. When I'm doing this, like you, I'm in the zone right now. Like you can tell I'm quiet, <laughs> but this is how it goes, and this is this is nothing's going wrong. There's no problems. I'm not fighting anything. That dude is. I don't know if you guys can hear that. See, this is why I, I chat so much because like hour two, I get in the group. I should do like an hour pregame show and then that's why they do pregame, right? Um, okay, so I mean, you can tell the difference between my models and wild. Yeah, for sure. We have our signatures. Uh, yeah, I, I do play a more realistic avenue than they do for sure. And I understand that. Um, thank you, Baz. Hey, what's up, bud? I know your name. Baz Slats, hello. Dutch or Belgium? I forget where you're from. I, I think you're Dutch, maybe. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, yeah, Gary. Yeah, I'll be on Wednesday, buddy. Enjoy your day, uh, all that fun stuff. Happy 4th, if you're, I don't, can't remember. I think you're married. Uh, if not, happy 4th and all that stuff and uh, everything else. Um, but yeah, so if you have the dust colors, even though they don't see you mind the names, what's your favorite dust color? Uh, I've used 502 Light Mud. It's one of my favorites. Buff. Um, and then I also put down UN Faded White. Uh, it's kind of an off-white. And then those three tones, uh, they're over here. These are my go-tos. They're right in here. Uh, Light Mud, Buff, UN Faded White. Uh, and then I've got my Windsor Newtons. I've got my uh, Burnt Umber. And then I'll, oops, that's what I get. Pull those over and I'll, that's, how, that's the color. So that little dark area was Burnt Umber mixed with a little bit right in there. Can't really say that. I'll put all the colors down for you guys and I'll put them down again for everything. But yeah, that's kind of uh, in the 502 conversation for sure. And simply because I haven't used a lot of the other brands and or art store brands too, uh, because my oil selection is so good, I don't really need to add more. And maybe in the future I should get back into uh, running some more tests with some other brands. I used the Adams for a while too. So yeah, so let's 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 do a light dust on the yellow, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll speckle everything together, and that'll probably wrap up for today. So the VS models uh, in the in the chat, he asked, does does dust on the light yellow matter? It, it can. It, yeah, obviously it's tone on tone. It's not going to be a big thing, big deal, but okay. So I'm just unloading on the paper towel, and let's just wet this whole. Let me get some. You can see how it's shifting that tone now. So this is the same dust colors I used on the green wheel. And this is also the beautiful part of it. Say for example, I had to go to a barbecue and the girlfriend's yelling at me, their wife's yelling at me like, dude, we gotta go, stop messing around with your, your toys. Say that happens and I gotta go. And I just get to the point of finishing the green wheel like this and then we come home tonight. Obviously, I've had a few beers. I've enjoyed TJ Steaks. Everybody out there barbecuing and grilling. I hope you're having a great time. I'm super jealous. We do have grill on site, though. We have a nice community lounge in this in this apartment building. A beautiful outdoor patio grill area. Okay. So this is TJ. I mean, sorry, uh, not TJ. VS. Sorry, bud. Um, this is how I treat this wheel. So yeah, you see, you get a slight color shift to it which those subtleties do come out when it's dry and I'm pulling a little bit more of the, of the UN faded white. And it's a little bit, yeah, see there, you get, you're, you're, you're seeing it. I'll overdo it a little bit for you too. So you just kind of get a good feel for that. But we'll have future conversations too about signature styles, developing your own personal style, you know, what you're into. So, so here I, I, I mess up and I bump into the other thing. That's again, none of this is no big deal. You just have to see it. Sometimes I'll do shit, I'll, I won't see it. I'm like, oh shit, where did that come from? <laughs> Oops. Yeah, that happens. But we have a nice working window. There's no, there's, there's no panic at all. Um, 
Yep, yep. Okay, you guys are leaving. Damn, it started. Yep. Uh, you know, yeah, so... Dutch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, I was going to say, we've met. I thought we've met before, Baz. Thought, thought so. My memory's so-so. Yeah. The BSMC is a show I do want to come back to. That was one of my that was one of my favorite little European shows. But I do have to hit SMC as well. If if I do not come over, um, so they're just me cleaning that up. So a t swap to the rake. That's got the thinner in it. I'm wiping on the towel. So you can see kind of how there it is. A little bit of thinner. That's what you're looking for. So I had that little error right there on the on the side of the green wheel from the outside in, and just brush that back in. Boom, done. So I even got a little extra love out of that. Because sometimes when you get a mistake, work with them. Sometimes they'll give you an effect you weren't planning. Let me dry the yellow wheel off. Just a little bit. Usually when I'm doing this too, there's much more of a flow. Like, you know, so when I don't have all this stuff in my way, so I can really get the hair dryer in and out real quick. It is really easy when it's, you know. But you can see on camera, there you go, that's how close I get, low heat. And you're just trying to fast evaporate the thinner on there. Because even though you're drying it, you can still work with this. So I dried that like 75, 80% on that yellow one. So let me go back in here. It is a messy day at the bench, my friends. That means we've been working hard. I like this. Overall going pretty well though. I think all, everything's coming across pretty good. Okay, so let's... We're just wiping, we're just working on the tire right now. I'm kind of going for a scruffier, a little slightly scruffier look. So not as linear. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of going like side to side a little bit as I'm, I'm scrubbing this down. But see what I'm doing is I'm constantly pulling the oil back to that joint so that it collects just like it does in real life. That's how you get the realism when you're talking about that kind of stuff. And, and this is what uh, gets into. Yeah, so the SMC, if, if that happens this year for me to get over there for the show. I haven't talked to Robert or anybody of the boys, Will uh, and any of the guys, for this year. I am scheduled as a judge to come for World Model Expo next year, next summer. That's on the cards. I'm coming, end of story. So, but we might still come in from this year. We'll see. We'll see how the books, the, the book deliveries go and all that stuff before the end of the year, if it happens. It's kind of open-ended, if you will, for this year, but yeah. And this is also on the wheels here. This is just layer one, guys. And we'll keep going on this in the future too. We'll, we'll, we'll come in here and I'm gonna put a little love juice on this in a minute and you guys are gonna love this part because we all wanna see the heavy grease stains and stuff like that. That right down there, that looks pretty cool. But don't you don't wanna have the same effect all over either. You know, you wanna have, see how those two wheels are, they're similar but different. Same, 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 <laughs> as the kids say. Same, same, but not. Okay. So what I like to do at this point in time, we're gonna use a little bit of a darker, greasy grime stuff. Let's do a little speckling. You knew it was coming. Let's do really fine speckles. Boom. Okay. See how easy that was? See how close I am? So that's about just around a centimeter, quarter to half an inch, maybe three eighths for my, my US dudes. It is the fourth. Let me just check the towel real quick. Double check it first. You can see your spots. You probably didn't see that, but it's okay. Trust me. Flick once. That's really nice. Rotate this. I have to rotate it mainly because the camera's in the way, so. But you can see how easy this boom flick. Boom flick, boom flick, one more, okay. We'll do a little bit on this guy too. He hasn't gotten any love yet. Let's do one more over here, go on the edge. But you can see how I angle the, the tweezers. That's kind of my aiming device. That's how you do that. Okay, so let's clean him up. So now we've got some, we're getting there. 
and you can hustle this like when you're when you're in the groove with this you can you can do these wheels 10 15 minutes a piece and really push this along uh greetings from germany nl how are you bud uh have you got a tip for weathering vehicles not long in service like one year max so if you're doing peacetime civilian stuff that gets washed and clean on a routine and then comes back in uh this what i'm doing here like you can see there's almost there's almost like no chipping uh it's a fresh coat of paint if this guy was in the field say this was a, a leopard or something in the field you know doing its thing and then it's coming back in you're going to have these kind of effects and then obviously you're going to wash and clean them so to to answer that because this comes up occasionally everything you see me do if your intent is peacetime a much cleaner representation then you do much much less of this you start pulling way way back you may not have added that darker brown color maybe just a little bit of dust grease a couple wheels move on so you just have to really it's it's a lot about restraint about personal restraint you know for for doing that kind of stuff so there's nothing i do between gunpla aircraft you, you tune in a little bit for subject but all this stuff is 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 uh adjustable carol thank you for coming by guten nacht have a have a wonderful monday good week coming up um and all that fun stuff uh justin thunderliger love juice is not the word choice <laughs> i know stuff slips okay so let's do a little bit here okay so we're gonna add a little bit of some grease to these guys so I'm coming in with my burnt umber or engine grease color. I'm gonna get a touch of black into it. I try not to use pure black. Pure black looks fake on a model. It also backs you up into a corner. When you use extreme colors, pure white and pure black, it backs you up into a corner and you can't go any darker. So what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna hit some of these bolts with a dark brown, kind of a greasy look. Get the center dude too. This is kind of a, a slightly juicy pin wash. I've got a second clean, I've got my two brushes. So you can see thinner uh, color brush on the left, a little bit wet. That's to get a flow going. And then I've got a clean thinner brush, almost dry, to just kind of clean this up. Because I don't want to fight a tide mark, but at the same time I can just do a couple little things here. And because of the weather, I can actually blow dry this with my by myself without switching to a there you go, you see, there we go. You're gonna get some nice flow now. Just a quick little spot. Some of these get the dust is a little bit too strong and just kicking them down. And then because I speckled, I've got already got dots on the surface. I can come back through and enhance some of those. And then I can spin this in the direction I want to. Oh, this is so much fun. I can't tell you how fun this is. So just pull this down. There's your little streak. There's your little oil streak. Fade that out a little bit. So when you can see, okay, well, first off, let's back up. We got a little bit of a tide mark here. See that little, a little bit of a tide edge? Let's take care of that first. No big deal. But what I was going to say before I got interrupted by Mr. Tidemark, um, not to talk like a five-year-old, but um, what I'm trying to say is no varnishes. I'm working on the fly. There's no edits here. This is this is oil paint on paint. I mean, oil paint on a base coat. Um, and I'm layering it up by using the, the cardboard palette, the hair dryer. I can move quickly and I can layer the colors up to get depth. Move on. Like, it's that simple, guys. I'm not kidding you. There's nothing else I'm doing. Um, so anyway, hopefully that's... that's. Uh, hey, you're back. What's up? In Paladin. I don't even know what to call you, dude. <laughs> ITL. Oh, man, that wheel is absolutely... Yeah, so TK, you can see, and this is me. I'm not, like, 100% in the zone, but I'm getting there. I could keep going. I should just model build all that. Dude, we got training, we got sunshine. I can smell the barbecues. It's killing me. I'm getting hungry. So yeah, that's kind of what I want to show you guys. We Actually, this is a good spot to wrap up. We've been three hours in. This is a long stream. That right there is money. I can go five, six, seven more layers if I wanted to. We'll, we'll start over here and over here next week. We'll pull all this in. We'll start pulling all this in. We'll start pulling all of this in as we go. So this will be a good little demo model to keep going on. Uh, I didn't get as far as I wanted to, but we did get some airbrushing done. Uh, 
What's the tide mark? Justin Thunder Liger. Okay, you're pro I'm guessing you might be Gunpla. Uh, tide mark is when you have thinner on the brush. Let's see if we can do this again. Probably can't. Watch where I can't. I won't be able to do it. <laughs> okay. So. And then load that a little bit, a little bit more thinner. So when you have any, and this, this happens with any pre-thin chemical, whether it's in the bottle, uh, enamel thinners, any odorless thinner, anything like this. What happens is that thinner diffuses out on the surface and then it'll start to dry rapidly as it evaporates. What happens is it creates like a cloud shape. And on that edge, we call it a tide mark. It's like what happens when the rain hits the dust and you've got the rain splatter and that you can see the outer edge of that. It's called the tide mark. So there, I'm getting a little bit juicy here. So let's, let's get a little, just a hair juicier. I knew it wouldn't happen when I wanted to. It always happens when I don't want it to. Okay. So you see how that, 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 that wet area, uh, what are we looking at, Justin? So you see that, that wet area? If I left it like that, the edge of that shape will dry to a line and you don't want those. Those are called tide marks. So you, you, you have to blend them out. So I'm just kind of blow drying that a little bit. See if I can get it to do it. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is at this point where it's starting to dry now, and so that outer edge of that thing is gonna leave a little bit of a ring. So come in with a clean brush. And in this case, as a circle, work from the center out. And just pull through that edge, and that'll wipe that edge clean and it'll dry uh, invisible. So you won't have a tide mark. So when I talk about not having to fight tide marks and stuff like that. It's because of this process where I'm blending before it has a chance to, to, to kick off. See that also get a little bit dirty and created a filter situation. So what you do is you clean the brush, come in and see how I'm just kind of cleaning that back out. But I'm pushing the dirty color into the bolts lead these streaks down here. That gives a little bit more interest. There. Now that's, that's wet, so it looks a little darker. Sponges back. I use the sponges a lot just because they cushion the model. They don't scratch anything. Uh, and they're quiet, you know what I mean? Like, you're not fumbling around on camera and making noise with this stuff. I'm just taking some clean thinner and wiping that through one more time. Dark contrasting colors will, will um, fight you a little bit if you're not careful. So, so like a white on a green or a gray will fight you, in a, or a dark brown black on a on a pale yellow will fight you a little bit. So you have to move a little bit quick. See that I soften that up a little bit. And that's how subtle a streak can be. You see how subtle that gets right there? I don't know if the camera is even. I mean, I know you can see it, but. That's pretty nice. I'll get those speckles in there too. But you can see from today's events that, that things went really smooth in terms of airbrushing in a hot weather, airbrushing mystery models paints, uh, which has been controversial a little bit. So we're able to kind of just demonstrate that. So you see these little speckles in here? I'm gonna use those as chips in the next stream. So we'll pretend those are chips and little rust chips and we'll, we'll develop that out. And it'll be the same look that you see on the cover of TA4. So I hope you guys really uh, got some good out of this. TK, thank you. Thanks for tonight, you're welcome guys. Baz, have, have a wonderful evening wherever you guys are out in the world. Uh, be safe, You know, be strong. Don't panic when shit goes wrong. It's super easy to fix anything. Work small, small mistakes, easy to fix. Uh, love your mom. 
Uh, what else? What else we got? What else we got? Happy Fourth to all my U.S. friends out there. Um, so if it dries and you don't see it real quick, last question of the day here. Um, and, and it is something like a stain that you just can't see and you can't get out. I don't have Twitter, brother. Uh, Instagram, Rinaldi Studio. Facebook, Rinaldi Studio. And then this channel. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Let's grow it, grow it, grow it. We're doing it. Timothy Wood, thank you, buddy. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad this is coming through well. Bill Cleanbell, what's up? How are you? Good to see you. Um, you gave me the fix for the Panzer II wheels. You're welcome, Mike. Uh, and, and that's kind of what I really wanted to get to you guys. Tell me your problems. <laughs> Not in the therapy session. That's for the other shit. Your painting problems, your weathering problems. But uh, yeah, Justin, so what happens back to you real quick? If you get a stain you can't get rid of, you may have to airbrush over it again, which is, it's a hassle. It happens. Don't sweat it. Or just do another effect over it to kind of just move it along. Um, but yeah, you can see here, this is this is early day, stage one right over here. This is ready for a second layer. Um, but you can see real nice contrast, getting some nice grease and grime. But not looking beat up, not looking like it's it's been just beat to shit and unmaintained. unmaintained. It's just it's just got a little bit of, and if studied, so I, I know Panzer 38 wheels pretty good. I know kind of how they leak and go. This is gonna be a pretty normal wear and tear for Panzer 38. Uh, big big Skoda wheel design like that. Really cool, really fun. Uh, Ken Webb, great, awesome, thank you. I'm glad you guys are learning stuff. Have a good fourth, thank you everybody. Uh, Wednesday, we'll, we'll stick to the Wednesday, Sunday, 12 to 2, 3 p.m. West Coast time. UTC is like what, eight, nine, eight to 11. Uh, I hope uh, everything's going well in terms of uh, your projects. That's it for me today. Thank you as always. I'll sign off here. And you guys all have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Thank you and happy fourth. Take care.